Welcome back to the Underground Broadcast, everybody. I fucked up the intro because I'm over here late getting ready and shit. And I even got the wrong lighter that doesn't even fucking light. So let me just grab a lighter. This is what happens when you do shit live. And you don't have any white people uh, working for you. Cheers, everybody. Happy fucking Friday. One of these days, I'm going to have enough money to hire a white guy to press all the buttons and have the beers and the blunts and everything rolled and ready for me. And that way, the only thing I got to worry about is making myself look pretty. I got all this shit, all these buttons and all this ass I got to fucking worry about. Uh, so forgive me for fucking up the intro. <laughs> Cheers. Happy Friday, everybody. Thank you for being here. Cheers, everybody who's here. <laughs> We got a new guy who was here first. Uh, I got a shout out to D Post, motherfucker. Uh, cheers for being here. And I'm going to light this one in honor of you for your first time being here on the live. D Post, cheers. Mm. Happy Saturday from the Netherlands. D Post, cheers to you in the Netherlands, Mike. <laughs> Hey, wait a minute. They don't say might in the Netherlands. What do they say in the Netherlands? Oi. No, no, that's the oi's is Britain. Let me know. I want to I wanna be a, a fellow ne Netherlander so I can uh, 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 cheers for you the right way. And shit. Uh, but let me hear it for, let me sh shoot it for all these motherfuckers. Cheers, Gomer, Joe Koo. Let me hit it for the motherfuckers that are here. OG Woke Pack members. Uh, no particular order, but let's hit it for Gomer Kyle. What's your name, scumbag? Gomer Pyle. Private Pyle, I'm going to give you three seconds to wipe that stupid-looking grin off your face, or I will gouge out your eyeballs and skull fuck you! One, two, three! Shazam! Cheers, Gomer. I love you. All right, uh, Super Saiyan Joku is here. I want to have the world... The world's most comfortable pair of ultra soft... Ah! Cheers, Joku, and cheers to the resident Australian, the cunt, coming at you also on a Saturday. Oh, I got two motherfuckers that are watching us on a Saturday. Cheers to you, cunt. Let me hit it for you. You can feel it while smoking. You can feel it while drinking. You can feel it getting woke as fuck. So get your slop ready, because the cunt is here. Cheers, cut. Thank you for being here. Uh, I think uh, that's uh, people who are live. I hope I didn't miss anybody. Thank you guys for being here. Appreciate you guys being here on a Friday, Saturday morning for, for you motherfucker, international motherfuckers. Spark it up. Uh, drink it up if you're an alcoholic. I don't know. You drink Saturday mornings. I mean, I used to when I was younger. <clears throat> I really can't anymore. I start getting heartburn. Fuck. Uh, anyways, it's been a good week. It's been a good week. You know, the weather's been fucking, it's getting warmer. Uh, people are, uh, I'm learning to ignore people so that I don't get mad. Uh, unfortunately, you can't ignore Marvel or DC ass or celebrities. So you know how that still pisses me off. You'll hear all about it tonight. Uh, a couple of public service announcements, of course, for the time being, because we are on a ban, a channel ban. We do have three channels at the moment. The regular main channel, Underground Broadcast. You're watching right now the emergency Underground Broadcast because we got banned from streaming on the other one. And then there's the illegal Underground Broadcast, which uh, I suggest you all look it up. The illegal Underground Broadcast is out there. 
And tomorrow uh, at 6 p.m. Uh, Central Time, I don't know what that is in the Netherlands, but we will be having a WrestleMania Night 1 watch party on the Illegal Broadcast channel. Uh, if you want the links, uh, I guess you can check on our main channel. I'll put it the same way I put the link to this channel. I'll put it on the top tomorrow. And uh, on our social medias, I'll release the link. But yes, uh, we'll be watching it. Oh, yeah. Uh, hopefully we don't get banned, and if we get banned, it's another, it's, it's a separate channel, so <laughs> I don't have to wait 30, uh, fucking, uh, you know, 80 days or whatever the fucking penalty is. Um, but yeah, don't complain about how small the screen is, and there's no sound, and all this ass, what you see is what you get, we're gonna get away with it. We almost got away with it last time, we watched the entire AEW up to the last two matches, when I started making it bigger so everybody could see, and that's when we got caught. So... I'm keeping it the way it is, and that's the way it's staying. Uh, Gomer, I think Cody's going to lose. <laughs> I think Hunter's going to pull a Vince McMahon, and Cody's going to lose, bro. This is gonna con The story is going to continue for another fucking year. I got a feeling that Roman, sh the, the way I would book it is Cody loses, fucking then Roman, uh, the, the Rock challenges Roman, the Rock beats Roman, he's the new champion, and then Cody beats The Rock. Ro Roman retires after that or whatever the fuck for his leukemia. Uh, but uh, we'll see, we'll see what happens uh, tomorrow's night one, so we won't know until Sunday. We'll watch night, we'll watch them both, hopefully. If we don't get banned, we'll watch them both. But make sure you look for that shit, the Illegal Underground Broadcast, check our social medias, and, uh, and, uh, and or our main page. Uh, uh, speaking of social medias, uh, this is uh, my current social media. So, uh, Twitter, because it is Twitter. It's not X until it's www.twitter.com. Fuck you, Elon Musk. Uh, it's at Cinnamon665 because apparently the underground broadcast was too long for a Twitter handle. Uh, fucking Instagram at the underground broadcast and uh, at the underground broadcast for TikTok. If you subscribe to at least one of those, you'll be up to date because I post the same shit on all of them. Except for TikTok. Obviously, I don't push updates on TikTok. It's just short videos. But you see the same short videos on YouTube and shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ready to rumble. Here's one of the ring wrestling more about scripted drama or raw athleticism. Let the smackdown begin. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I just, I'm a big fan of WrestleMania. I haven't, I don't watch WWE. I just, I watch the videos of people recapping Mondays and, and SmackDowns and shit. Uh, but I don't watch it. But I, I like watching WrestleManias. I watch AEW. That's what I watch. Uh, I just, I prefer good wrestling matches over storylines and scripted shit. I just, good wrestling matches and, and, and the real showmanship of athleticism is amazing. And in AEW, those motherfuckers are literally trying to kill each other. Let me see uh, what dangerous thing I can do to you and, 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 and come this close to killing you. That's what it is in AEW. It's fucking insane sometimes. Will Ospreay. A god. The wrestling god. Oh, man. That guy is, I think he is the best wrestler in the world. Uh, he just hasn't been given that title yet. It's coming. I'm telling you. It's coming. That motherfucker's amazing. Uh, but let me get into the comments because apparently we had a lot of comments here at the, at the very end of uh, Friday. Uh, appreciate you guys who comment, but let's start with the comments. And we're going to start with Rocco Fuck My Life, one of our old G fucking woke packers. Uh, here we go. Let me hit it for this asshole. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Rocco. All right. Uh, Rocco Fuck My Life says, I've never been more glad I left my laptop recording your live show. Got to rewatch and see all the Godzilla spoiler scenes. Cheers, son, for being a pirate. Cheers. Hashtag woke ass fuck. Oh shit, wrong one. Sorry. Yeah, I'm all fucked up already. Live. Um. Yeah. Um. It sucked because Saturday morning, you know, before I went to work or whatever, I was trying to upload the video and the video because it's three hours. It took forever to upload the re-upload. And then it says that it's got a copyright strike for the Godzilla. I'm like, sons of bitches, I literally did the same thing for the Ghostbusters the week before, and it didn't got fucking banned or copywritten, but the Godzilla did. Um, I guess I didn't expand it to, I don't know, I just, I, I fucked up or somehow, but people who were there live got to see all the spoilers that I showed. I mean, I showed the scenes from the movie and shit. So you got to see that. 
Um, yeah, that's what we do in this. Any any fucking Marvel movie or whatever, end of credit scene, I'll show you the shit on the live. And if we can get away with it, I'll re-upload it on Saturdays. But as long as YouTube's getting better at, at catching me and shit. Uh, but I'm trying. I'm trying for you guys. For you. And was cheers, Rocco. Thank you for commenting. <laughs> All right, let's see who else is commenting. Oh, shit. Our resident Asian robo Igert. Let me hit it for this yellow motherfucker. Konnichiwa. And Robo says, Hey, son of man, I saw Godzilla X Kong with the family over the Easter weekend. Sucks YouTube block your video footage. It was entertaining. I agree with your statement of this is not a human story. Yeah, it's not. I think most of the critics are being too hard on this. It's not supposed to be an amazing dramatic movie, but I guess after seeing minus one, it's hard not to compare. Cheers to the woke pack. Hashtag. Woke pack. Oh, 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 live. See, one of these days I'm going to have a white guy backstage and he's going to know when I say hashtag, he's going to press the button. I don't have to be fucking around here and I can just focus on my gang signs and shit. This is annoying as fuck. <laughs> Anyways. Cheers, Robo. Uh, yeah, when you see Godzilla minus one, and then you see Godzilla cross Kong, you know, it's it's completely different movies. It's like Godzilla x Kong is the only way to explain because it's monsters, right? So it's everything's fantasy and fake. But the only way I can explain it is Godzilla versus Kong or x Kong is more of a fantasy movie. Whereas Godzilla minus one is more grounded in reality, if that even makes sense, because it is a fucking monster movie after all. Uh, but I, I think it is it is more grounded in reality and shit. Mm. Cheers, Robo. Thank you for commenting, you yellow motherfuckers. I love you. Um, C Mike. Uh, one two three, brand new guy on the did did they make morph gay video? He says uh. Morph was always bi, at least. Uh, he didn't keep gender identity because he was literally gender fluid. Um, I don't know, man. Because the white face, the no face, I know they... they. First of all, there was two characters that were made up when the X-Men uh, in the 90s, series 94, uh, started. And they were made up just for the series. And it was Jubilee and Morph. They did not exist prior to. There was a character that you could say was Morph in the comic books. And he had the no face like that. And then later on, once the... In, I guess in the early 2000s, the comic books put Morph in, in the X-Men comic books. And then they gave him the no face from the other character. And I guess that's what they're doing nowadays. Uh, but originally, I mean... The way they did it in the original series in the 94, he was supposed to be Caucasian white guy looking like fucking one of my fucking white friends and shit uh, on crack. <laughs> but yeah, um, I don't know. I don't have any problem with this uh, new morph. Um, it's all right. Uh, I kind of like the no face, you know, and they really haven't. I don't know. I don't know how far they're going to get into this this bisexual gay shit. Uh, if they're going to elaborate or more on as the coming episodes or what they're going to do. Or is this as far as it's going to go? I don't know. I don't. I really don't know. So we'll see. Uh, we're going to review this week's episode. And I'll let you know all about it. Because I was actually really excited about it last week. And then I saw it. God damn it. I'll talk about it later. Cheers, Mike. Thank you for commenting. Um, a new guy called Big Lock 2209 on the Connor McGregor's on drugs. He says, Connor, asterisk, meaning I misspelled it because I put C-O-N-N-E-R. And apparently you spell Connor C-O-N-O-R. Um... Yeah, you know what? First of all, I'm American. 
And even worse, I'm Mexican. I'm American Mexican. I'm not a Mexican American because I wasn't born in Mexico. I'm American, but was raised by Mexicans, uh, unfortunately. I was born in America, raised by Mexicans. So I'm American Mexican. Uh, so I don't know how to spell these fucking uh, European uh, uh, Irish names and shit. I didn't. I thought I thought Connor had two ends. Uh, give me a second, because my allergies are bothering me. It's because of this goddamn fan that I have on. Let me take it off. I'm just gonna turn off the fan real quick. And shit. I'm gonna vacuum tomorrow, but all this. The, that fan's kicking up dust. It's making my eyes water and shit. I don't want it to smear my makeup. I work really hard on this. You know what I'm saying? Connor suffering from a high uh, tide, or is that the the writing Connor? Or is that the uh, t t tide writing Connor? I I mean I I've never he was fucked up in that video. He was 100% fucked up. Um, I've never seen him like that. I don't know, but I mean, you know, I, I've seen him act crazy and shit, but I've never seen him like that, so I know he's on. he was on something. All right? It was obvious. It was, cheers, big block. And I'm sorry I misspelled an Irish name, all right? I don't know about the McLeods and then the fucking, uh, uh, the McDonald's and then the Winstons or whatever the fuck they're called. All right? Cheers, big block. Oh, Anthony Timmons. This guy's cool. Um, Danny, Danny Masterson has started a, a gang in jail. He says, this guy has always been a turd. He walks like a turd. He looks like a turd. And he acts like a turd. And probably smells like a turd. Let him rot. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of them, man. Like that other guy, Wilmore Valmarevo or whatever the fuck. The fucking Fez. I mean, he was dating Lindsay Lohan, and she was 16 at the time. The motherfucker was like 28 or something. Fucking, fucking the shit out of Lindsay Lohan. And you wonder why she went on and did all those drugs and shit. She fucked up this little girl before she was even old enough to, to be mature. This fucking guy. And, uh, and not to mention Aston Kutcher. I mean, Mila Kunis was like 14, and they were all making out with her. I mean, this is so, it's a lot of fucked up shit. When you go back now and you think about it, all of this perversions that are now coming out and people being accused and things come, it was there all along in front of our eyes. All along. For all of us to see. It was there, motherfuckers. I'm just saying the truth. Um... But anyways, uh, cheers, Anthony Timmons. Thank you for commenting. Appreciate you, motherfucker. This guy's becoming a regular. I appreciate this guy. Cheers. Uh, uh, Iron Mike 212. I wonder if this is Mike Tyson, guys. Holy shit. Mike Tyson wasn't, watches my channel. Cheers, Mike. We love you. He says, is that a filter? Um, I, I, I think he's asking about me and shit. That's actually a good idea. We need to, I need to make a, a son of man filter and then like sell it on the, on the, on the fucking uh, uh, Apple store. And anybody can look like me. It'll put on makeup on you like this and shit. And, and a bandana and some fucking braids. That'll be fucking dope. I made some money on the side for the channel. Oh, and by the way, everybody, we're try I'm trying to reach uh, monetiz monetiz monetization on YouTube. So make sure you subscribe and tell your friends and shit. Because uh, if I start making some money, the goal is to make $1 a day off of these videos. And at the end of the year, hopefully, making one dollar a day, I'll have enough money to buy a pound of weed, and I'll show it off here. Look what I bought with the money on YouTube. Oh yeah! Cheers! <laughs> it says we have enough videos and subscribers, but apparently we don't have enough view time. Nobody watches us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 566 subscribers, and only like 40 of you motherfuckers are watching the videos. Fuck you! Yeah. <laughs> 
cares? I love this channel. <laughs> uh, I'm like the Conan O'Brien of YouTube. Nobody fucking watches us and shit. I swear to God, we might as well be. I might as well be fucking doing this live at fucking uh, four in the morning and shit. <laughs> cheers. Thank you, Iron Mike. Midnight's live. This guy on the Dennis Danny Masterson has started a gang in jail. So, the man, I want to do an interview. Uh, an interview with who? With Danny Masterson or with me? Because if you did an interview with Danny Masterson, that'd be fucking sick. And you'd probably get a lot of views and shit. I went to your channel and I looked at it. That shit about... <laughs> this guy's funny. He's just talking about like fucking... Uh, that he's telling people... Uh, he's kind of like Alex Jones. He was telling people that they need to drink uh, uh, butt ice. Because the butt ice has these chemicals. And when you drink it, if the chemicals react in your body. And then you piss out all the liberal liberalism out of you. So it cleanses you. <laughs> it cleanses you. <laughs> Cheers, Midnight Life. Uh, contact me on my social media. And let me know what you want to do. I'm open for collaborations. Uh, uh, fashion shows. And shit like that. You know. No, nothing like Diddy. All right, We're not going to do no debaucherous shit. Uh, we're going to talk about Diddy tonight. You know how that is. Uh, but yeah. Like, social media is where you need to get a hold of me. Twitter or Instagram. I already put it on the beginning and shit. If you want to talk about collaborate. Cheers. Midnight's live. Yo, go check out his channel. This guy's kind of funny. Uh, Super Saiyan Joe Koo is on the Morph is Gay video. I don't mind Morph being by, but not Logan. On the low low, just no. But like Son of Man, and I always say, together we can lick anything. Meow. Cheers, mother flowers. Hashtag. Live. Together we can lick the world. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's 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 it's, it's, a, it's a it's a it's a world, you know. You know, I know Diddy right now is being accused and all this shit's going on, but you know, I'm just gonna let you all know, you know, like twenty years from now, all that shit's gonna be normal, all right? People are gonna be having sex with all sorts of things, not just fucking people, dogs, cats, all these weird shit. It's gonna be a fucked up world, but by then, well, I'm gonna be dead, so I'm gonna be okay with it, you know. <laughs> uh, I don't know about the rest of y'all, but <laughs> anyways. Cheers, Joku. Thank you for commenting on this channel. <laughs> I'll be perfectly honest with you, Deep Post. I have never, never drank but ice. Um, actually, uh, I'll tell you the, uh, the story with me on, uh, about like fucking what went down. Oh, and by the way, if you all know why I'm sometimes commenting late. Is there is a 12 second delay on the live feed because I don't have Google Fiber internet fast instant shit. All right, so I see your shit late. Um, my story with beer is I started out like most teenagers do, and I start off hard with the Budweiser, the red, the red can. But somewhere in the middle of my 20s, uh, because of all the drugs and all the staying up late, not, not eating right. I would get really bad heartburn and I couldn't drink the fucking, uh, the red can anymore. So I switched over to the Dylan Malavani beer. The blue can. I had a couple of woke-ass friends, you know, they're trying to be progressive, get with the times, and they started drinking that Bud Select. You know, the, it looked like a, looked like a shit can. It looked, it looked it was like gold or brown, I don't know, it looked like ass. Anyways, I drank one of those. I didn't like the taste. It tasted like it was expired or some shit. I don't want bad drug bug select. You know? Um, eventually, this really hot chick I was fucking, she would drink this ass. Uh, not a sponsor, but you can tell what it is. The the rep the cowboy beer over here. You know what I'm saying? In Texas, Lone Star. The, 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 the cowboy beer. You know what I'm saying? Um... 
And I'm like, give me that shit. Let me see what it tastes like. And uh, and I liked it had more flavor than the Dylan Malavani beer. It, it it even made me feel because I always thought that natural natural I think it's called natural light or natural select something like that. It's, it's some kind of it's also from Amheuser, I think. But that one tastes like water. But when I tasted this one and compared it to the Dylan Malavani, I used to, I I thought right away the Dylan Malavani is water. Cause this has flavor. What the fuck? And so I've been I've been I've been hooked on this since then, just because of the flavor. I've never drank Bud Eyes. Uh, I, that's I I because I think that's new. I think it's fairly new. Maybe I've been maybe ten years. Maybe I don't know. It's fairly new. But I you know, I've never tried it. There's another one. They're like amber or some shit. I don't know. Like, Bunch of fancy people drink all these kinds of... Amheuser is no longer American. I think it's like German-owned now and shit. And so they're making all these kinds of d different brands for it and shit. <laughs> yeah. It's mixing beer with Coke cooler, then lighting up. Um. Uh, I mean, I don't know about cooler. I mean, I'll just tell you, like, fucking... The only way... The only reason I ever knew why people did Coke while drinking beer is because they wanted to to sober up and keep drinking beer. You know, I never believed it. Uh, but one time in my 20s, I was drunk as fuck. And somebody, you know, whatever the fuck. It was like, you know, it was the next day I was falling asleep and shit. Somebody brought something out and I said, oh, sure. Why not? Let me see what this is like. Let me see. Let me see what all the fuss is about. And, uh, and, and I fucking sobered up instantly. And I said, holy shit, I'm not piss ass drunk anymore. I can drink some more. Let's go to the store. We went to the store at 8 in the morning and we bought another 24 pack. <laughs> we drank till 10 in the morning. <laughs> I mean, I was awake the whole fucking night. Uh, but yeah, I guess that's why people do it. I was never a big fan of it. Um, I always had, I don't know, I, just, I, I have allergies, right? And that shit would fuck me up at the next day, the next week, you know? After doing it, so I just didn't like it. And plus, I saw a video on YouTube and it showed the motherfuckers making it in the jungle and it was disgusting. Motherfuckers, you know, using gasoline and all these... It's just... It's nasty stuff, all right? It's natural, okay? They're just a, a fucking... A dry leaf, all right? That's all it is. It's a dry leaf, all right? They put it on here by God, all right? I don't know about it. I'll tell you, I think everything that... Everything that is not grown from the earth that you can just plick and, and put in your mouth and eat it or just and dry it and smoke it. Anything that is not that, that's a drug. This is a drug because it has to be processed and all that shit. You know, the white stuff's a drug because even though it's a plant, you can chew on it. No, to make it into that, you got to do a bunch of shit. Everything's a drug. The only thing that's not a drug is the marijuana and the shrooms, my friend. And the licking of the toads and all that shit. That's all natural. That's all God put all that shit. God put the, the, the frogs so you can lick them. You know, that's what God put them there for, motherfuckers. Everything else in the man, the devil made it. It's evil. Cheers to the devil. Every time you drink alcohol, it's, a, it's the, devil's pee, the devil's piss. And the different, the different taste of beers and, and, and liquors. It's because of the diet the devil had that day. So it tastes different. But I'm telling you, this came out of the devil's fucking penis. Cheers. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Joku also said on the Dragon Ball theme park, the idea is dope. But uh, like you pointed out, that there's a history of shit that... Oh, hang on. Let me open this right away because I know it's going to fuck up. There we go. History of getting shit done, but in reality, I can't even afford to buy tickets plus the theme park itself. So fuck that shit. And announcements go on after Akira Toriyama passes away. Come ball shit. Rest R.I.P. RIP Akira Toriyama. Cheers, mother flowers. <laughs> it's not going to happen. It never is going to happen. Saudi Arabia is never going to build this theme park. They announce it. They try to get some money and build some hypes and get some clicks on YouTube. Let me get some clicks on YouTube. Get some money coming in from the YouTube money. That's all you're going to get. Because those motherfuckers will never build this shit. They never. They start something and they never finish it. They leave it half done. Motherfucker, I ain't even going to lie. When I went to Egypt, I couldn't believe 
I saw entire cities abandoned. And I thought they were abandoned cities. But when we, drive, when we drove by through them, I thought maybe war happened. And oh shit, there was a war. There was a fucking battle here. No, motherfucker. They were building a city and then they quit or they ran out of money. It looks like they ran out of money and they left or some ass. You know? And I asked the tour guys what's going on. Ah, oh, they're just, you know, they did uh, abandoned projects they were gonna build here, and then they never realized nobody wants to live in the fucking desert where there's nothing. It rains once a year over there. Fuck you. You think that's cause you build a shiny building, you're gonna bring the rest of the world to you? Fuck you. I grew up in a hundred degree, 120 degree weather in the summer, and I got the fuck out of there the first chance I got. You think I want to go there for vacation? Fuck you. Idiots. Cheers, Joku. Nobody's gonna go to Saudi Arabia for a fucking Dragon Ball theme park. They should have built that shit in Los Angeles over there, Universal Studios. You idiots. God damn it. Oh. <laughs> it's none other than no ma'am. This fucking misogynist rapist. Let me hit her for this asshole. No ma'am. National Organization of Men against Amazonian masterhood. Uh, no ma'am says, on the Danny Masterson started a gang in jail. With his Scientologist brainwashing techniques and his years of experience as an actor, it did not take him long to take over the joint. He he'll have this new Cholo gang selling online insurance scams from the inside in no time. Cheers to the man. Hashtag. I'll tell you what, man. This motherfucker is actually, uh, he's, he's legit, man. I'll tell you like that because, and not like, not, not like, he's a rapist. He belongs in jail and all that shit. But I'm telling you, this guy is legit as far as his training in Scientology is probably, Scientology has probably has given him an advantage because this motherfucker, uh, he can manipulate people and shit, you know, because he's already taught the techniques, you know. And plus, like, just like exactly how this guy says, he's he's been pretending his whole life, his ass careers, to pretend to be someone else. You know? 30 years in the joint, man. For drugging and raping women. Fucking crazy asshole. But I guess in Hollywood, everyone's been doing that. Has been doing that. And everyone who has been doing that, you're gonna get caught. It's coming to light. I'm telling you. I'm going to quote Melanie Mack here in the Bible because she says everything that's been a secret will come to light. All right, everything, everything that's been hidden will become to light. Your dirty secrets, your dirty laundry, it's coming out. Everyone will know. Sons of bitches. It's happening. Cheers, no ma'am, you rapist. Oh, this. That's two down already, motherfuckers. Let me get another beer right here. I got my ice chest. Oh, yeah. Nice and cold on these motherfuckers. Cheers. Happy Friday. J Hart W. On the Dragon Ball theme park. The Son of Man is a realist. I just say it truth. How, how do you expect a country that abandons every fucking project they're building to build a theme park? Better yet to attract people from all over the world. Fuck you. Cheers, J. Hart W. Oh, yeah. Gomer Kyle on the Son of Man Reads Your Comments video. He says, Hey, I get 20 gummies at 150 milligrams per gummy. God damn it. I'm so fucking jealous of you motherfuckers that live up north. I don't understand. You know, life is hard down here in the south. We deserve to fucking have legalized marijuana. What the fuck is going on? God damn it. We got the biggest state. I mean, you can drive for fucking two days across our state. You know, it takes forever. 
And over there, like, we, we should, we deserve, we deserve to fucking have legalized. What the hell's going on in my state? Uh, Gomer continues, says, only fans for the win. Cheers. Hashtag. Live. Hashtag. Live. I don't think I would do it. Hashtag let's go Cody fucking Rhodes. Uh, cheers, Gomer. He's gonna lose. <laughs> He's gonna lose. Bloodline all the way, motherfucker. The final boss. I'm telling you, everybody's gonna freak out because night one, they're gonna lose the match. And then night two, it's gonna be fucking Seth Rollins' band. Uh, Solo Sokoa, uh, uh, guest referee, The Rock, special enforcer, <laughs> Jimmy Uso, timekeeper. It's gonna be crazy like that, bro. It's like, it's gonna be crazy, bro. And people are gonna be pissed about it, but I'm telling you, that's how you book wrestling. Because you piss people off. And then you make them happy, 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 happy. And then you fucking piss them off. That's how you do it, motherfuckers. I'm telling you, you want to be a real heel. The Rock be a real heel. They keep them. They keep the fucking bloodline going. And they add more members. That's what they need to do. Then you get Tomatonga and that other fucking Uso in there and shit. Have Rakishi come back and come out there and shit. Be, be just there standing. He doesn't need to do shit. Be badass, bro. Uh, J Hart W. On the Puff Daddy, where did it all go wrong? He also says, uh, did he do it? Question mark. Looks like yes, did he did it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Austin coming out would be a fucking bad... Uh, Gomer, that's fucking good. Gomer, you're a good booker. I, definitely, Gomer, if I start a wrestling promotion, you're coming in too. That's a good booking right there. Austin comes out and uh, just like Foley. <laughs> Get ready to power up thrilling bat bats, adrenaline pumping all night long. <laughs> Cheers, y'all. Again, I appreciate you guys for being here and also fucking uh, uh, keeping the chat live, chat alive. Uh, I, I try to watch you guys. But sometimes I've already moved on from a subject, and so you know what I'm saying. Because uh, there is a delay. One of these days, we're going to be rich and fucking, you know, a lot of money. We don't have to have fame. We can only have 500 subscribers. That's fine. But we'll have a lot of money. When we have a lot of money, I'll pay for a white guy, and we'll fucking... You know, we'll have Google, Google, no, fuck Google, I'm gonna pay Elon Musk, give me one of those satellites, one of those X, uh, Starlinks, and we'll fucking Starlink this bitch instantly live, everywhere all over the world, everyone will see this, no, no one will see it, no one gives a fuck about it, but either way, we'll have all the technology and shit, I'll even have Lil Wayne as a fucking musical guest, it'll be legit, nobody will watch it, but it'll still be legit for you motherfuckers, cheers. Uh, cheers, uh, thank you for commenting, J Hart W. Bruce Hobbs 462 on the Danny Masterson started a gang. What a lot of false shit. His fucking head is too big, big talk truth. You wanna be. Uh, are you telling me or fucking Danny Masterson? <laughs> or Danny Masterson? <laughs> I mean, it sounds like you're telling Daddy Masterson, uh, but uh, I don't know if you're telling me. <laughs> uh, cheers, Bruce Hobbs. Uh, be more specific, you dumbass. How the fuck am I supposed to know what you're talking about? <laughs> cheers, thank you for commenting. Oh, uh, and next up is D-Post. Our resident, uh, fucking, uh, I was gonna say Neanderthal. <laughs> nah, our resident Netherlander. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, he comments on the Conor McGregor is on drugs and he says, Looks like something, something, something yourself as well. Peace, man. Oh, yeah. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Looks like. 
your something something yourself as well. Oh, okay. Then I was on drugs. And t That's what this channel is. We're on drugs here. We're drinking, fucking smoking. Well, we're, we're not doing anything illegal. This is the tobacco leaf rolled up in a fucking cigarette shit. And this is, uh, I poured Kool-Aid into this can. This, uh, uh, this, this, uh, what are they called? One of those cans they sell to look cool and shit. Cheers, YouTube. We're keeping it safe. Try not to get banned. A broad audience, all right? All right. It is still 18 and up because we do curse here, but still. Cheers. We push the envelope as much as we can. All right, let's keep going. D Post also says on the. Uh, I was reading comments. Oh, yeah, yeah, because there's a motherfucker, uh, Winston. I think Wins Winslow or some shit like that. That motherfucker, he said, um, uh, I forget what he said, but I don't know. He's just making fun of the reply. I said, what do you want, motherfucker? <laughs> goat. Oh, shit. He said I was the goat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheers, fucking depots. The Neanderthal, the Netherlands. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cheers, motherfucker. Fuck, man. The Netherlands must be fucking cold over there all the time. I would hate it. <laughs> nah, I'm a, I'm a fucking lizard. I ain't gonna lie. I grew up in 120 degree weather in the fucking summer. I remember. Because the weather's changing everywhere on Earth. So it's, 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 it's cooler down there nowadays. But I remember this one fucking year. I was in high school. And uh, back then, we actually went to school up to the the 22nd of December. Ned, these kids get like three weeks off. They get holidays for everything. I see kids. The schools are closed all the time. Nobody goes to school anymore. Fucking bullshit. But anyways, we went to school until the 22nd of December. We were not off until the... No, actually, I, mean, I think maybe even the 23rd was half a day. I don't even remember. But I remember it was two days before fucking Christmas. And I was at school wearing shorts. And sweating because it was hot. <laughs> That's where I grew up, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, yeah, I wonder how what it is in the Netherlands. It must be fucking winter all year long, I bet. Oh, yeah. Kanye exposes his wife again. Depot says... G only got good things coming. Oh, yeah. We love the Yeze in this fucking channel is all I'm going to say. We're going to talk a little bit about the Yeze. He uh, he finally showed his face. You know, he took off his... his <laughs> he finally showed his face this week. So we got to talk about him. Talk about it later. Uh, David McCoy, 1978. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good year. That's a good year. Oh, uh, and the Danny Masterson has started a gang in jail. He says, I'm a new subscriber, but let it be known that I have a hard time taking the word of a man with drag queen makeup on. Well, you know, I mean, yeah, I'm not going to lie. You are from 1978 and that kind of stuff, you know, unless you... Boy, George was the only motherfucker doing this kind of thing. I mean, even like Alice Cooper wasn't even pushing the boundaries as much as he should have. That pussy. Uh, so I totally understand. But you gotta understand, nowadays, this is normal. If you don't look like this, you're the fucking weird one. Ah, cheers, David McCoy. Thank you for subscribing, motherfucker. Cheers. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I spotted a mountain yeti chilling in the Dutch dust mist today. What the fuck are you smoking? <laughs> Depose, that's badass. You should take a picture. We have cell phones. But by the way, anything you send me on social medias, picture of your cat or whatever, you hanging out with your friends, whatever you send me, I will post it here. I usually do. Uh, but just try to give me some... Like I told Super Saiyan Joker earlier, because <laughs> I thought he was sending me, I started getting notifications. The show was like 10 minutes away. I'm like, I don't have time to fucking, because I got to go and edit stuff and put it on the program and all that ass. So 
So, you know, don't send it to me fucking 15 minutes before the show because I ain't going to have time to put it. <laughs> but whatever you send me on my social medias, even if it's you and your wife or everybody just chilling your dog, a fucking piece of shit you saw on the floor, whatever, I'll post it here. I don't care. We don't have any subscribers. <laughs> Nobody watches us. Cheers, y'all. <laughs> Cheers. Deep pose. On, 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 well, it was actually the first underground broadcast that I did. Because this used to be another channel. It used to be called something else before that son of a... He who should not be named abandoned all of us. Anyways, deep post on the first underground broadcast says, Hey, dude, when is your live show? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, now you know. 7.30 Central American time. I don't know what that is. That's probably like 6 a.m. Fucking Netherlands time or some ass. Something like that. <laughs> On a sad the next day and shit. Uh, you know what's crazy is we get... I get more people from out of the country. Like, do we got another motherfucker? He hasn't been on. No, he's working. He's working hard. He's like, he, this motherfucker's a hard worker. He makes the money. Indie Phantom. The Canadians out there, too. We got an Australian. We got some uh, two or three motherfuckers. Uh, I know one of them. Uh, uh, shout out to Brad Bradley o. Lewis, our Awoke Pack fucking member out there, motherfucker in Australia also. I know he's just has a kid and a wife. He's busy and shit, but I know what's up. We got other motherfuckers in America, too, over there in the Maryland chapter of the Woke Pack. Uh, Dr. DJ, uh, DJ, uh, I forget what his name was, DJ something, uh, fucking, uh, fuck yeah, <laughs> you haven't been here in a while, motherfucker. Uh, uh, Dr. Dre talks shit, or DJ talks shit, something like that. <laughs> uh, Eddie Molina Vilches, all these motherfuckers been on here for a long time, all over the world, watching this, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate you guys. You know, that's all I gotta say. It's just a weird channel. It's a weird channel. I never expected it uh, to n to not get popular uh, because it isn't. The chairs. <laughs> all right, it's three seventeen midnight over there. Holy shit, that's crazy, bro. <laughs> Well, if you fall asleep, because this goes on for like three hours, <laughs> you can always watch the re-upload tomorrow. You know how it works. Uh, also, deep post on the colored racist or a thing now. He says, well said, because I call this little girl a piece of shit. You know, if you can't get a, if you can't be in the same room with someone who looks different, whether it be their skin color, the shit they're wearing, or, or, or you know, they're... they're the, the 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 color of their fucking uh nails god damn it if you their long hair whatever if they just look different to you and you cannot be next to a person that looks different than you then just fucking stay at home fucking stay at home you piece of shit all right that's all i'm gonna say the plain and simple you don't have to call nobody racist or nothing whatever the fuck if you can't be next to someone who looks different than you regardless whatever it is skin color clothes whatever the fuck if they're different than you, and you can't be next to someone who's different than you, stay at home, you piece of shit. That's all I'm going to say. Cheers, D-Post. You'll make a world a better place. You'll make the world a better place if you just stay at home. D-Post also says on Danny Masterson, when, uh, in the gang in jail, I thought drugging women was a good thing, this fucking guy. <laughs> all right, all right, we're going to try to get banned here. You better take these in the comments, motherfucker. We're going to get banned. <laughs> uh, all, right, all right, let me make sure this is guy. This was the last comment. Let me refresh it uh, real quick. Oh, shit. No, it wasn't the last comment. Uh, there's, uh, But anyways, Deep Post had another comment. And he says, also on the Danny Masterson. And he says, He's just doing exorcism for the church. This this man can't earn a medal. He's gonna have a lot of converts, bro. And a lot of those guys, when they get out of, when they get out of jail, because this guy's got thirty years. When those guys get out of jail, they're gonna be converts and they're gonna go straight to the church. Yeah, that's crazy. It's almost like if the church is telling him, "Hey, now that you're in there, we need you to work." For us, <laughs> it's a gang, bro. It, it was Scientology's a cult gang, and now he's in there, and now he's gonna spread it in there. That's how it's working, bro. You really think 
He's still a Scientologist, motherfucker. Even if he is in jail and they're still taking care of him. His commissary? His commissary is probably like 30 grand a week. <laughs> this motherfucker is living like a king in there with that from the church and shit. They're taking care of him. As long as he doesn't come out and expose them, they're going to take care of him. Fuck, man. It's crazy the way the world works. Cheers, Depose. Uh, anyways. Hey, serious question. Why are only black people allowed to use the N-word? And uh, no one should, uh, Gomer said. I agree. Uh, I'm reading the comments. But I agree with you guys because... <laughs> uh, I, I don't understand why even black people say the N-word. Because to me, that is literally the equivalent of someone like myself, call, like me calling another friend that I grew up with. What a wet back. And he would tell me, nothing black, my, my wet back. How you doing, wet back? I mean, that shit will piss me off. And I get it. They're not, they're saying it different. But that still doesn't, doesn't make any sense. It's, it's just like, it's, it doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, why they use it. I, and I'm with Gomer and I don't think no one should use it, period. It should be offensive to everyone. Uh, and just like wetback is offensive to me, I, mean, I don't want to be called that. So why would I? Why would someone black want to be called that? I just, I don't understand it. I get it. They use it in rap and music. Nobody in the Mexican culture uses that wetback in the music industry and shit, or even beaner or nothing like that. So it doesn't make any sense to me. Spick, what do you call? What up, Spick? We don't. We don't. It just doesn't. It doesn't make sense to me. I think that's another shit the white man made up to keep the Browns down. And the Browns somehow thought it was them that made it up, but it wasn't. I bet you it was a white man who made it up. Let's have them call each other the word that we're calling them. That's what happened. It's a trick. That's all it's, all it's ever been. It's a fucking uh, 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 a way to trick fucking people in any way. Shit. Anyways. Uh, let me like this li like and heart this last comment, and it's somebody called Ashley Grima eighty two eighteen. Oh, that might be. Well, I don't know. They might they might be a female. Or they might identify as a woman. They might be a man. I don't know who they are. The non binaries, whatever the fuck. Either way, thank you for commenting, Ashley Gr Grima, and on the Conor McGregor's on drugs, and they say uh, they say. Columbia's finest or on the pipe I thought so too I that's what I said I mean nobody twitches like that and the tongue gave it away because he was like you know like the only time I really felt like what he was experiencing me when I know for a fact that I was acting like that I was in MDMA but it was an MD because you know when you take a fucking ecstasy pill on Molly there's other stuff in it it's not just an MDMA, you idiots. Uh, the drug dealers, they fucking put coke or speed or acid or heroin. And then they, along with the MDMA, and then they crush it and, 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 and compress it into a pill. But there's other stuff in it. It's not just the MDMA. Because I've, I've dabbled in a variety of assortments. And I know they all made me feel different. And I'm a little smarter than the average fucking human being. So I could tell I'm like, this one has this. This one has this. This one has this. So I would be like, okay, don't buy the blue dolphins. Don't buy the pumas. Uh, stick with the, the little green G units is what they were calling those. Those were, I think those were the pure MDMAs where I was at. I'm like, because that one just made me feel happy and fucking mellow and shit. Whereas everything else, I was either like melting on the couch like I was on heroin or I was lit up and shit. Or I was hallucinating. So, I mean, that's what I'm telling you. That's the other shit. That's a, you gotta stop doing drugs at one point because you realize people are just out there to fuck you up, bro. Uh, plain and simple. And so, when I saw this video, I knew this motherfucker was either on crack, speed, or coke. The way he was acting. It was an upper, for sure. Uh, did your spirit dance in your vision while you journeyed on the MDMA Express? No, um, but I understood a lot of my own personal issues and problems at the time. 
when I did it. I will tell you, you know, MDMA does, it, it, it helps you realize, you know, self-realization and shit like that. Uh, but I will tell you one thing that the MDMA did, bro. Um, so, this was, I must have been 21, and I worked at some bar and shit. And uh, there was a friend of ours, because it was one of those things that we would hear about, but we lived in a town that was still kind of not a huge city it was still kind of growing it was a small city but it was growing into a bigger city so we were not you know we there was no mushrooms and shit like that like it started coming in late into our shit but we heard about it and shit and i had already gone to austin and shit and did a lot of stuff and had come back but this is awesome but there was nothing like that where we were at um so my friend would go out of town and come back with a bag full of we they back then they called them exos. Then then they changed the name to Mollies. No, no, exos or rolls. Rolls was the word that people would say a lot. You wanna roll? You wanna roll? And then exos became a thing. And then it was Molly. Uh, but that's what they were calling it. But he would come back with a huge fucking bag full of hundreds of little fucking shits. And he would sell everybody at the, the bar. And everybody, because it was a brand new thing, everybody heard of it, everybody would buy it and shit. But anyways, long story short. After a long night of partying, I went home to the apartment where everybody hung out and lived. But everybody was still at the party. And so I went and I knew nobody was going to be there. And I was like, I could catch a few fucking Z's before anybody shows up and shit. You know, I'll catch a few Z's and shit. Uh, and so I went and uh, nobody was there. The door is always open because nobody nobody has a key. The doors never, don't lock the door. It's what the rule is. So I went in there. And I sat down on the couch. And I was about to just pull back and probably catch two, three hours of sleep before people came back from the party. And then there was another party in the apartment. But then, from the hallway of the apartment... I'm not going to lie to you. This is what I fucking swear to God I saw. I saw the figure of a man walking from the hallway of the apartment into the living room. And it was just the literal outline of the figure of the man. And it looked like the predator. Where... If he stood still, you would just kind of fade in. But since he was moving, I could see the outline of him. And he was walking casually, like if nothing, you know, from the fucking hallway into the living room. And he was what it looked like heading out the door. And I was sitting there on a couch and I go, what I stood up and I said, what the fuck? And the motherfucker just stopped like this. I'm not playing. And when he did that, I freaked out and I sat back down. And he was just like that. And the outline was kind of fading into the background, but I could tell he was still there. And I freaked out. And I grabbed this, the fucking, the, the covers that I was going to use to just kind of sleep over with this stupid little cover. And I put it over my head. And I was all like, I'm on drugs. This is a real. Go away. Go away. Go away. Go away. And I was just like that, talking to myself. And then eventually I took it off my head and he was gone. I freaked the fuck out. Five years later on the internet, I start seeing this shit. About how the military has cloaking technology. And they use it over there in Japan too. And it's like a cloak. It's like a Harry Potter cloak. That mirrors what's behind the person. And you, and it looks just like that. And five years later. Because I thought I just hallucinated. Because of the MDMA. And the they might have put in the fucking pill. But five years later I'm thinking. The fucking DEA was using this technology and probably looking 
because my friend went and bought hundreds of fucking pills and they thought he was a big time drug dealer or something and they came into the apartment looking for shit and this secret agent in this fucking predator technology was snooping around the apartment when nobody was home and was casually walking out when I was there and he freaked out when I fucking saw him. That's a real story that no one believes, but I know years later, that's the most rational fucking answer then. Oh, it was, I was high and I imagined this. No, it happened. And that's what it fucking was, bro. The government has technology. They've had technology like this and they do secret operations like this on people and shit. And that's what they were looking for. They were looking for a big time drug dealer and they just found out they're just a bunch of bartenders that went out of town and fucking bought a bunch of ecstasy pills to sell to their friends. Because that's all it really was. But that's 100%. I am still convinced to this day that is what I witnessed and that is what I experienced that fucking uh, morning because it was already the morning when I got to that apartment. Um, that's fucked up, but I'm telling you, that's uh, that's my crazy experience. The craziest experience on drugs that I ever had that I know was a real experience because I was probably I was already coming off it, bro. I was already coming off it. So I know I wasn't hallucinating. And the fact that when I stood up and said, what the fuck? That the motherfucker just stood? Still? <laughs> Fuck you! That just gave, to me, years later, that was the, 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 the definite proof to me in my head that it was real. Uh, but <laughs> anyways. <laughs> cheers, Ashley Grima. <laughs> for commenting. I went on a trip there and gave you some fucking X-Files. Shit, motherfuckers. Cheers! I appreciate each and every one of you for commenting. You make the show. We'd have a really short show if there was in the comments. Uh, coming up next, I am going to have the weekly pop culture breakdown celebrity ass followed by all the comic book nerd shit. You know how we do. Uh, here are our, my social medias. Son of Man at 665 for Twitter. At the Underground Broadcast for the TikTok and the Instagram. Whatever you send me, I'll show before we start the comments and shit. Thank you guys so much for commenting. Cheers. All right. Opening up a new beer here for you motherfuckers. Cheers. All right, let's get this show on the road and let us start with the weekly pop culture breakdown. We're going to start off slow, because last week we dove right into the ass. Let's start off slow, and we're going to start off with Rebel Wilson. So this saga continues. We talked about last week. She came out on her, on her memoir, her book, and she called out Sasha Baron Cohen that he's an ass. And that, uh, you know, he wanted fingers in his ass during a scene. And then he wanted a sex scene when they were naked and all this crazy stuff that she was just like, this guy's a fucking asshole and shit. Well, somehow the BBC or one of these fucking British tabloids or whatever, TMZ in Britain, whatever they're called, they got the video that was a deleted scene, but they got the video of the filming and they said, this bitch looks really comfortable filming these scenes. Well, here we go. We're going to show it to you all. Let's make up your minds if, if, whether this is disgusting or not. And mind you, you are going to see Shasha's fucking ass. I try to censor it, but here we go. Yeah. So I'll do a slap and then I'll do it. Yeah, all right, down all right. Ready? All right. Well, it's almost as if you're going to ram your fingers inside. Yeah. Just a gas for the fit. Yeah. Uh, no, it's fine. Yeah. All right. Okay. Ready? All right, good. And go. Oh. Mm, not me, man. Jody. Jody. Mm. Mm. All right. 
Not, not my man's don't it? After that curry last night, it's like a loaded gun. Mm, sweet Jesus! Mm. Oh. Not, not my man's don't it? After that curry last night, it's like a loaded gun. No! Ah! It's good, right? Mmm. Delicious. Mmm. Not my bum hole, Donny. After that curry last night, it's like a loaded gun. So, she's coming out and saying, Hey, the reason why I didn't look disgusted is because this is after they convinced me to just film the scene, but I was disgusted. I didn't want to be part of it. And shit. Look, she didn't look like she was enjoying it. And I gotta tell you, I'm glad they cut this out of the movie because it doesn't look good at all. Ah. Uh, I just... It, it, what kind of motherfucker says, ah, oh, you slap my ass and then, like, pretend you're gonna stick your finger in my ass and shit. <laughs> this is so fucking crazy. Uh, but anyway, so she's sticking to her story, and, uh, I'm pretty sure he released this fucking set video saying, ah, oh, she wasn't mad, she went along with it, and shit. Uh, but, uh, I don't know, I don't know, I will tell you one thing that did happen straight, shortly after this, is that apparently, Sasha Baron Cohen and his wife of 13 years, Isla Fisher, are officially divorcing suddenly. <laughs> I bet this bitch is all like, you told me I was the only one who was putting fingers in your ass. You fucking liar. You've been doing it all along. <laughs> Cheers. Here's another ditty right here. Caught in the act. Your lies are coming out, motherfucker. Finger in the asses. And all your 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 fucking debaucheries are coming out. <laughs> I'm gonna come out and say the truth. This chick was way too hot for him. Too damn hot. And and if we're gonna reverse the roles, because I don't wanna just shame one of them and not shame the other ones, he was way too famous for her. Right? She's like a nobody shit. She'd be like fucking a small, like not even a side character. She'd been like the side of the side character in movies and shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So this was never going to work. I'm surprised they were together for 13 years and shit. Oh, I remember her. You know where I remember her from? From Hot Rod. <laughs> she was the, the, girl, the girl that fucking Rod liked and that was going out with Will Arnett. They, when when she broke up with him, he was like, Babe! 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 <laughs> uh, that's where I remember. And that's the only thing I remember her from. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what the fuck she's in. She's not nothing. You know what I'm saying? So he was too famous for her, and she's too damn hot for this fucking Inspector Gadget looking motherfucker, is all I'm going to say. So God bless her getting divorced and give somebody else a chance. Cheers! And uh, God bless Rebel Wilson. You need to fucking start eating some more pizza and shit. Some fucking calzones and shit. Get back in that good figure. I don't like when you're looking like fucking Adele and shit. Ass. <laughs> Something that was spotted this week. Or more like more celebrities that were spotted this week. I'm sorry. I'm already feeling the effects of alcohol and fucking drugs. So I sound a little dumb. What happens? But Sandra Bullock and Jennifer Aniston were spotted backstage at a Broadway show of a production in New York. And they looked hot as fuck. Younger, more attractive than some of the stars there next to them. Fucking, that's what I'm talking about, motherfucker. Oh, yeah, cheers! <laughs> Surprisingly, 
It is coming out to light. Now we know. We're starting to find out. Days after the fact. Why these 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 beautiful, uh, mature celebrities outshined everybody there? Well, folks, they were spotted just days before this picture. Leaving a retreat. It's called the retreat at Split Rock. It's a retreat when you go for celebrities to go and have plastic surgery. And this retreat specializes in face, brow, eye lifts. All right. Uh, tummy tucks, liposuction, facial reconstructions, nose jobs, fillers, and Botox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And while you're there recovering from all the fucking hideous procedures and all the surgeries and cutting and, and cutting your bones, let me shape your jaw to be straight so I gotta fucking shave some of the bone fucking marrow off of you and shit. And then fucking take some of the, the, the fucking skin from your gut and put it back on your chin because I just scraped some of it off and melt it back on there and shit. While you recover from all these fucking hideous surgeries, you can stay here at a private resort, pampered by all these fucking uh, attendants. Nobody ever knows. But the minute you step out the door, motherfuckers are going to take pictures and they know what you were doing the past couple of fucking months. You've been missing from society. Where the fuck does person go for the six months? <laughs> Apparently, they went and had surgeries together and hung out there in the retreat while they recovered. All so they can fucking show up in this Broadway show looking hotter and finer than everyone else. <laughs> Cheers to Hollywood! <laughs> Ain't it amazing what fucking people put their own bodies through? The mutil their own self mutilations just to look that damn good is it worth it is it worth it well I'm just gonna say one thing here people as an observer you're goddamn right it is oh yeah cuz I'd rather see Jennifer Aniston Sandra Bullock looking like this than looking old and shit and withered Ah, <laughs> so they got the money, they get yeah, bitch, you go fucking fix yourself up. And look the same way you looked 20 years ago, so I can keep on masturbating to you. Cheers. <sighs> Cheers to Jennifer S. and Sandra Bullock. <laughs> 50 plus desperate housewives looks like leaving on a broom. <laughs> like witches on a broom. Oh, uh, yeah, wedding crashers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fred, Sandra Bullock's always been fucking fine as fuck. I can't believe she went out with Jesse James and shit, and then he fucking cheated on her with that tatted up Satanist Cat Van Doom or whatever. What, Van Don or Van Doom or whatever the fuck she wants to call herself and shit. That, porno, that pornographer, because there's pictures of her naked online, so that's a pornographer if you ever if you never know one, that, that's what that is. All right, we're moving on. Since we're talking about pornography. Because none other than Denise Richards has just come out and shown off flex for everybody and said, Hey, I am making $2 million a month on OnlyFans, bitches. That's more than they paid me on those shitty cameo roles and shit on the movies. Yeah, 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 yeah. And she's trying to come out and she's showing off and she's coming out and she's saying, you know what? I actually got the idea. I can't take all the credit for all the millions that I've been making this past year. The credit, I have to give it up to my daughter, Sammy Sheen, because I found out that she was making eight hundred thousand dollars a month with her only fans this is charlie sheen's daughter <laughs> and denise richard's daughter this bitch is all like you have an only fans i'm making 80k a month mom 
Denise Richards, who doesn't have a fucking job and has zero income coming into her life, said, What is this OnlyFans again? <laughs> and now the mother's making two million dollars a month. <laughs> Say, bitch, I'm more famous than you, daughter. I can make more money for this half. Fuck, fuck that aid infested this crackhead of a father you have, I can make the money for this household now. Cheers! Uh, and here's a little preview for you guys who don't know uh, of Denise Richards' OnlyFans. It's not as slutty as her daughter's over here. Fucking sucking on a fucking pickle and showing her ass and a thong and her nipples that I covered there with a fucking, with the letters. Uh, hers is a little bit more wholesome, y'all. A little bit more wholesome. Uh, and it's more like holiday themes and shit. Family stuff. So here's a little preview for y'all if you want to subscribe to her and help on her funds to make her maybe three million dollars a month. Um, you know, that's not, you know, what she must be like fucking 60 years old. And I got to tell you, like, she did not have, I mean, obviously her face has, has been worked on, uh, but her physical body, she has not worked on it and it's aged and I appreciate a natural body that she shows. I'm not going to lie. It's her natural aged body with her plastic surgery pump full of Botox and who knows what else face. But her body is her natural body. I can see where she get two million dollars from so we got holiday pictures and shit turkeys and, and Thanksgiving and shamrocks for you know April Fools and shit like that holiday pictures for everybody two million dollars worth Oh yeah, is it worth it? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how much she charges a month I mean, you know most of these what is it like thirteen dollars a month? I don't know if you want to spend thirteen dollars a month on pictures there's deep fakes on the internet nowadays that are free. I'm pretty sure there's porn of her. You know, it's not really her, but you know, the face put on someone else's uh, body getting fucked. So I, why well, it's free. So why would you spend money on fucking bullshit like this? Is all I'm saying. But either way, I didn't spend money on these fucking pictures. I found them online, and they didn't come with a Santa Claus on them. That's all I'm gonna say. Uh, so yeah, congratulations for Denise Richards for somehow making two million dollars in an age where you really don't need to pay to see this you can find it for free and somehow she still makes two million dollars a month cheers to her <sighs> yeah 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 she was in playboy all, all the greats were in playboy gober Oh, yeah, it's including Jerry Hallowell, Ginger Spice. Oh, my favorite, favorite issue of all time. I wish I still had it. God damn it. I also had the one with Charlize Theron. Oh, yeah, Mighty Joe Young, motherfucker. Oh, she was so fucking gorgeous. I can't believe Sean Penn, that hideous Frankenstein-looking motherfucker, fucked her. And had children with her. That's... Man, that guy has must have a big dick. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Anyways, let's keep going on, you motherfuckers. Uh, since we're getting a little perverted here, let's move on to the big perverts. And by big, I mean none other than the infamous Dan Schneider. Because now, people on the internet, because of all this documentary that came out on the, the dark side, the kids' shows, and... Fingers in the asses and Drake Bell getting molested by Brian Peck and shit. And this son of a bitch over here watching porn and telling women they're useless and then putting Ariel Grande in a bathtub and bathing her and then licking her feet and shit like that. Um, people now on the internet because some of these kids from those shows are actually defending him. Which is bringing out all sorts of questions is that why do these grown-up children 
who were exposed and saw this stuff going on are still protecting this man. It's a little weird. So, the internet now is ex fucking accusing Elizabeth Giles and Ariana Grande of accepting hush money from Dan Schneider in order to not further slander his name. And something tells me this hush money slash NDA that they probably signed was agreed upon a very long time ago when they left Nickelodeon. They got a huge payout. They got a huge, uh, what do they call it when your boss gives you a letter to take your next job to look better? I forget what that shit's called. Uh, a recommendation or whatever the fuck. They got a huge fucking badass shit to take on. And and then they were they 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 said, "All right. I took the finger in the ass. I'm ready for fame, bitches." This other little girl, I don't know, I don't know. I think I've seen her in porn or something, but Ariana Grande became huge, you know? She was a big star, you know? So all this all this fame and fortune comes with a price, and they paid the price. You know, those other pussies complained, and that's why they ended up nowhere in life. And now they gotta make these shows where they say, somebody molested me and shit. Well, these little girls, they fucking played the game the right way, and now they are where they are. Little Ariana, you wanna suck on my toes? Suck on my toes, you fat man! Here's my foot in your fucking mouth! Ariana Grande didn't give a shit. You know, neither does other little girl. Like I said, I think I saw her in porn. I don't know what she does nowadays. I think she is a porn star. I don't know. Look her up, everybody. Um. So, yeah, you know. This guy, you know, the fingered asses and, and sucks on toes. And these little girls, you know, I guess they, they like that. And they got money and they're famous now or whatever. I don't know. At least one, one of them is. So, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, but yeah, all these accusations are coming out and, and, and Ariana Grande and this little girl are not responding to this ass at all. Uh, they're not responding to it, obviously. They're not going to say nothing about it. Uh, but if you ask me, this guy is a fucking perv. Straight up. And uh, you see all these pictures, you know, like it's a grown ass man grabbing a fucking 10, 11 year old like this. You know. I have nieces, and I don't even grab them like this, you know? Because I'm just like, oh, you fucking get away from me. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm just like, ah, get away from me and shit. No, you know what I'm saying? You do not want to be near a man who looks like this and be hugging them right now, little lady. <laughs> You're making the scene look bad. <laughs> Cheers! <laughs> All right, all right. Enough of this fucking Dan Schneider shit. This is getting crazy. Well, right, you know what? Oh, God damn it. I wish I could stop talking about uh, fucking Nickelodeon perversions and ass. I ain't gonna lie, man, because I hate these kinds of fucking subjects and shit we get into. And it just drives my, my channel closer to getting banned. Already nobody watches us and we still get copyright strikes and bans and videos get copy written and, and putting on 18 and up only and ass nobody even watches this fucking channel and shit i've seen i've seen and not under sign under 18 on my regular youtube channel but i've seen fucking channels where i click on it and it's a fucking doctor literally doing breasts uh fucking uh uh what is it called uh, breast surgery where you make the boobs bigger plastic surgery on these bitches and he's, and it's just, you see the chick, you see the nipples and everything, he cuts into the skin and you see everything he does. And I'm like, I'm not even signed in under as adult. This motherfucker hasn't gotten banned. You know what I'm saying? I show one porn on this shit and I get a copyright strike and a ban. Fuck you. Anyways, we're gonna move on. Alright, right, right, right. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're not done with the, oh, god damn it. We're not done with the children molestations and Nickelodeons. Because for some strange reason, a network and a studio that is primarily uh, focused on only children entertainment 
and having nothing but children shows and children's as employees somehow continued to employ perverts and sexual molest molesters of children's and let me explain to you why because none other now we're finding out that Matthew Underwood said hey nobody called me nobody called me and said they were doing a fucking behind uh, the dark truth of kids shows I need some money why did anybody call me and so now he's coming out and said ah this is what happened to me if you don't remember this guy was on Zoe 101 and he played Logan Reese that little curly haired fucking nerd that was always trying to fuck with Zoe but nobody give a fuck about him you know and shit he's coming out and said hey I was sexually molested by my agent my agent from the age of 12 years of age all the way until I was 19 and it gets even worse because the agent was his childhood's friend's best friend his best friend's dad the parents trusted this man because they live next door the kids play all their life in Hollywood we take care of our son take him with you make him a star make us money that's what the parents thought make us money finger in the ass is what happened and this little boy at 19 said I am done with Hollywood and I am done with fingers in the asses I quit I am gonna go work at Burger King I'm gonna go be an insurance salesman I am going to fucking be a fucking manager at a fucking uh, used car sales lot I don't give a fuck I'm done with Hollywood I will never never get a finger or a thumb in my ass again <sighs> I am telling you man there are probably so many more stories that are gonna come out there's probably stories that will never come out because like I said in the past that we just talked about some of these kids got paid off or signed an NDA and got a lot of money and fame Keenan Thompson came from Nickelodeon and now he is on SNL rich and famous and shit a lot of motherfuckers that came out of Nickelodeon Justin Timberlake Britney Spears look at how fucked up people are this was happening for a long, long fucking time. But the world is changing. All around you. All you gotta do is look at me. It's changing. And we're not gonna put up with this shit anymore. No more. Finger in the asses and children's and shit. It ain't gonna fly anymore. Not in this day and age you pieces of shit I can't cheers to this but I'm just gonna drink cuz uh, I'm an alcoholic cheers <sighs> but let's get into it folks let's get into the nitty gritty Diddy. And this week, none other than Young Miami, Puff Daddy's ex, was brought up in the lawsuit by Rodney Jones as was identified as one of the three whores that P. Diddy paid on a monthly salary to do whatever the fuck he wanted. Here's a butt plug. Come fuck three of my friends. Just come over here and stand here naked while we masturbate and fuck each other. Bunch of guys having gay sex while this chick is naked watching them. Because that's what they wanted. I don't know why. Um. 
So yeah, she's been named, and and this is his ex girlfriend. But I guess the girlfriend was a front, and she was actually a whore, according to what the the, the lawsuit is saying. Not only that, but this alleged whore was being paid to uh, also um, carry and transport pink cocaine for Diddy and his entourage. Now, despite what the name says, pink cocaine actually does not have any cocaine in it. For those of you who don't know, Pink cocaine is actually a combo of ketamine, MDMA, and caffeine. All right. Pause some food coloring and some shit to make it pink. So, yeah. yeah. P, P, P. Diddy like to put also crunch Cialis and put it in there, too. So everybody fucking have hard dicks when they fucking do this. Doesn't matter if you're horny or gay, your dick is hard. You better fucking find a hole to put it in. That's the, that's the philosophy he lived by. Not me. That's just him. All right. Rodney Jones claims that Miami Young was getting paid by Puff Daddy a whopping $250,000 a month to do all these things. $250,000 a month. Why the fuck? I mean, does anybody ever put an ad on the paper for these types of jobs? I mean, why come I never hear about these types of opportunities and shit? You have any idea how much I made last year? 19K. This bitch is making 250K a month. God, I could do everything she was made paid to do. I'll fucking, uh, fucking, right here, all the cocaine in my bandana and shit, and I'll put it in here, my dreads. Am I fucking braids? God damn it. The fuck's going on? I could stand there and watch a bunch of gay men have sex. Naked. Not me naked. Watching them. Wow, I mean, that's what they want. Fine. You know? I mean, one finger in the ass. Yeah, $250,000 a month, bro. Come on. I don't know. A finger in the ass, but it's not too bad after that. Just saying. Anyways. Yeah, she's being dragged everywhere now, and it's now coming out to lie that uh, she was not his girlfriend, but was just another whore. And apparently, all of this was actually confessed by her. Years in advance, my friends. Here is a quick interview that she made uh, a few years ago. To show you how when she was rapping and shit when he when you know because he signed her she was a rapper and shit. But here we go, and she explains it all to you. Now I have to censor the word and shit, but you don't understand. I put it right there so you know what she's saying when it when it when it when you don't hear a sound. But here we go. I just had a conversation with somebody the other day. I said I'm really like I'm more like with a with a W like I'm more. But define that though. Like I'm more. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. She said it herself, she's a whore. The guy who was interviewing her even, what, did, what do you mean by that? What Define that, what do you mean by whore? And she said, well, I'm a whore. With a big W. Dicks, butt plugs, everything. Give me money for my body. Is basically what she was saying right then and there. I didn't say it, she said it. Ah, it has taken a sad turn of events because something that nobody likes, nobody wants to do this because come on, man, you got to keep the kids out of this. Diddy is a father of multiple children. He has impregnated several women, I believe. He has enough money to do so. Leave him alone. God damn it. If he could have impregnated men, I'm sure he would have done it already. But it's uh, impossible. I'm sorry, trans community. And that ain't going to happen. Anyways, Diddy 
Diddy's son is now being named in this lawsuit. Christian Combs is being named in this lawsuit. Yes, he is now also being accused of taking part in the drugging and sexual molestation of women, orgies with men, partying, sexy cocaine, transporting of drugs, uh, but mostly drugging uh, and, and, and raping drugged underage women. They were probably his age. They were his friends from high school. He brought them all. Hey, Dad, look at all these friends I have. Bring them over, son. Bring them over right now. Oh yeah. Not me, Diddy. That's Diddy saying it. Okay? I'm just impersonating. Take that. Take that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's how he does it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cheers! Oh, not to this situation. To, to the old school bad boy. Old school bad boy. Cheers. Anyways, um, let's move on from his son. <laughs> because this gets getting worse for this motherfucker. This guy has no, there's no saving, no saving face for this asshole, for this pervert, and this sexual molester. Motherfucker hangs out with no man, I bet. Anyways, because now it's coming out to light that this goes even further of him liking underage girls. Because apparently... Uh, a year or two ago, he adopted a white teenager off the street. Here's the video explanation. You coming straight out of Puff Daddy's mouth? Here we go. Oh my God. My name's Ava. I'm a Scorpio. No, no, no. What's your last name? Oh, Ava Combs. So what's your other oh. last name? Ava Baroni. Ava Baroni Combs. Yes, it's, it was breaking news. Diddy adopted a white child. I want, you, I want you to tell them the story about how I adopted you. So, I was on the streets, and then Papa Combs decided that he would like to be a caring man. So then he saw me and decided to pick me up and said to come inside and play with his kids. Ah. Yeah. Uh, that's like the beginning of a porn right there. A little white, a small little white girl with a bunch, surrounded by a bunch of big black men talking about they picked me up and they, they brought me in here to play with them. What the shit did we just saw? If we get bad tonight, it's because of the shit that Diddy posted is all I'm gonna say. That is so fucked. So apparently Diddy has adopted a little girl for all these years to play with. With all his friends. You see all those guys back there in the background? I'm gonna play it again and I, I try to cover the sound here. <laughs> My name's Ava. Look at all these fucking guys back there, bro. This is so, so fucked up. <laughs> he found me walking in the street. And he asked me if I wanted to be in his family and come play with him and his friends. And I said yes. And so now my name is Combs. Do you see any children there? I mean, there's some balloons in the background. <laughs> <laughs> then like the beginning of it, a fucking horror film what is that black phone the fucking the guy with the balloons and shit that grabs the kids <laughs> except diddy puts it on instagram the other guy in the background celebrating that they just got a little girl oh my god that's so fucked up y'all that's so fucked up it gets it, yeah <laughs> It gets even worse. It gets even worse. Because people are starting to find old P. Diddy videos are resurfacing about all of these behaviors. And these signs were in front of your eyes this whole time, you ignorant, dumb sons of bitches. Here's a video of when he first met Justin Bieber. All right. Before this, uh, I just need to explain is that 
Because Usher was, Diddy found Usher, and Diddy found Usher when Usher was a teenager, and the way he brought him into the business is that he went and got legal custody of Usher when he was a teenager to bring him into the business and then become his handler. Finger his ass or whatever he's into. You'll find out right now in a little bit. But this is when he first missed Justin Bieber. And uh, the video speaks for itself. I didn't even have to edit it. Here we go, motherfuckers. Justin, he's in, you ever seen the movie 48 Hours? Right now, he's having 48 Hours with Diddy, him and his boy. Um, they're having the times of their lives, like, like, like the, you know, where we hanging out and what we doing. Um, we, we can't really disclose, but um, it's definitely a 15-year-old's dream. Um, you know, I, I, I have been given custody of him. You know, he yeah. signed to Usher. Usher. I, I had legal guardianship of Usher when when you know he he did his first album. I did yes. Usher's first album. I don't really I don't have legal guardianship of him, but for the next forty eight hours, he's with me. So um, <laughs> and yeah, and, and we gonna go full, buck full crazy. We're going crazy. Buck full crazy for the next forty eight hours. Puff Daddy had complete unadulterated, unsupervised access to this little boy. Well, that was Justin Bieber, probably at eight, nine years of age. Here is Justin Bieber at the age of 14 when he ran into Puffy again, years after that 48 hours. Here we go, guys. Starting to act different, huh? No, you, you, ain't, you ain't been calling me and hanging out the way we used to hang out. Well, I mean, you haven't. I mean, you try to get in contact with me, you know, through all my, you know, business, you know, partners and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But you, you never really got, got my number, so. Right. Okay. My number. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. I gotta play it again. This is years after that forty-eight hours. He ran into him in the studio. Starting to act different, huh? No, you, ain't, you ain't been calling me and hanging out the way we used to hang out. Well, I mean, you haven't. I mean, you try to get in contact with me, you know, through all my, you know, business, you know, partners and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But it, you, you never really got, got my number, so. Right. Okay. My number. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, yeah. I gotta give it up to Beaver because Beaver was all like, "I don't like the finger in the ass, man. I'm sorry. It happened one time. I'm rich and famous. It ain't gonna happen again. All right, look." Like, I'm sorry, you gotta get, in, ta gotta get in, 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 in contact with my people first. Uh, let me give you my fake number. Call this, call this dud number, okay? Don't worry about it. We'll see, uh, we'll see, we'll hang out again. Fuck you. <laughs> That's what Beaver was the, fuck you. Never, never again will you have your finger in my ass. <laughs> but, he's rich and famous, so he accepted it. He didn't squeal. And he got paid for it. Cheers to busted Justin Bieber for being rich and famous. <laughs> he took it. You have to take it in order to become it. All right. It's what it is. All right, Illuminatus. If you, if you know, you know. Oh. More videos are coming up with Diddy and his past. Now, I see you, young Miami, rolling your eyes there. Like, oh, yeah, bullshit. The truth is in the pudding. And the pudding has been there all along. Here's another video from the past. Puff Daddy on a late show with some black guys. Not our CDO Hall. Every, every black guy had a fucking shit in the 90s back then. You know, it wasn't just before the BLMs. They still had their shit. I don't know what the fuck they're complaining about it. The Mexicans don't have a show and shit. You know, George Lopez had a show, but he fucked it up. Idiot. Anyways, but anyways, apparently Tyson was guest starring on the same show that Puff Daddy was guest starring. And this incident happened to show you all that the signs were there all along. Here we go. It truly is about the Benjamin, as we see. Oh, yes, he's, he's literally. <laughs> Yeah. 
Well, now when we come back, we're gonna talk more with Puffy, and if you wanna hang out, more than welcome, stick around, my brother. Thank All right, you. we'll be right back with more right after this. It, it truly is about the Benjamin, as we see. Oh yes, he's, he's glittering. <laughs> Well, now, when we come back, we're going to talk more with Puffy, and if you want to hang out, more than welcome to stick around, my brother. Oh, All right? We'll be right back with more right after this. I mean, this is so embarrassing for Puff Daddy. Because I feel like what was happening is Puff Daddy had his hand next to Mike Tyson's knee, and then Puff Daddy was probably starting to caress Mike Tyson. And Tyson didn't like it. And on air, Tyson grabbed his fucking hand and moves it away and said, fuck you. And he moves away. <laughs> and Puff Daddy looks so awkward. Like, did he just move my hand? <laughs> I was trying to make him feel good. <laughs> Tyson don't fuck around. Tyson said, I don't like that finger in the ass, motherfucker. I've been in jail. I know what this is all about. Fuck you. It ain't happening here. You know what I'm saying? Aha. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, he didn't like it in jail. He had to do it to survive. In jail, you gotta survive, motherfucker. All right? You've gotta do what you gotta do in jail. All right? If you don't do it, you know what I'm saying? It gets done. Rather you do it than to get done. That's all I'm gonna say. But this is all I'm saying is that he don't fuck around like that. And Tyson wasn't afraid to show it back then neither. It's embarrassing for Puff Daddy. Like, what was he thinking? Like on air? Let me fucking let me tickle this guy. So let me try to put my finger in his ass, see if he. Let me see if he wants to come backstage and shit. Oh my god, Diddy, you sick son of a bitch. <laughs> does does having that much money, like a lot, a, like ridiculous amount of money and pull in an industry make a man feel and think he can do anything he wants? Is this what we is this what we are witnessing here? I don't know, y'all. I I've only dreamt about having that kind of wealth and power. I've never experienced it. So I don't know if I would be this daring. Ah. <sighs> but I will tell you one man who is daring. And that's none other than Curtis Jackson. Because he can trade, continues to troll the situation. And he went on Instagram, 50 Cent, and he posted a milk carton with the missing ad of Jay Z. And he said, Hey, where is Jay Z during all this? He suddenly disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking 50 don't give a fuck. <laughs> oh my god. Jay-Z's next, y'all. If, if if fucking Puff Daddy just went down, I promise you, next in line, Jay-Z and your queen bee herself, Beyonce. Because the rumors have been there. And Joku has said it in the past. Was it Joku or was it fucking uh, Joe Cool? One of you motherfuckers said this, but you said in the past that somehow the conspiracy theories seem to be two, three years ahead of what the tabloids, of uh, what the news finds out years later. You know, and it's like, yes, you're right. And the rumors about Jay-Z and Beyonce being just as perverted and debaucherous as Puff Daddy and doing just as bad things as him, they've been around for years. The difference is that Puffy didn't care and invited everybody he knew to these parties and people would take pictures and word got out. Whereas Jay-Z, it's like only the Illuminati is allowed in this orgy 
Diddy, none of your friends can come over tonight. You know, Jay-Z's more quiet about their debaucherousness, but it's been there. They like little girls. Jay-Z and Beyonce, according to the rumors, that have been around for fucking almost 20 years. Jay-Z had uh, Aaliyah. Aaliyah was a teenager, signed, and fucking him and Damon Dash would pass her around, fucking the shit out of her and shit. And she was an Illuminati sacrifice for, 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 for Jay-Z. It's all coming out to light, and 50 don't give a fuck, because 50 knows. 50, 50 knows, because 50 was signed to Interscope, and 50 saw Jimmy Iovine and Dr. Dre go to these fucking uh, P. Diddy orgies, and 50's all like, nah, I'm just gonna go home. I'm good. I'll talk to you tomorrow. 50 didn't take part in this, but he knows about it. And now that it's coming out, and these guys, I don't know who the fuck these guys pissed off. <laughs> I don't know what white mother what white Jewish motherfuckers they pissed or you know what this might have been Yeze's doing Yeze his craziness might have said toppled the pyramid and the guy said you know what fuck all the rappers start doing them in all of them one by one everybody start doing them in we're not gonna take a chance anymore Yeze Fuck this guy going crazy. We're gonna, if before one of these motherfuckers go crazy, send them send their asses to jail where they belong with the rest of the Browns. And that's what's happening. But because 50 didn't take part of it, he just knows about it. He can sit back and laugh and smoke, and smoke a stogie about it, man. R. Kelly, too, with Aaliyah. Yeah, they all fucking had their way with Aaliyah. Poor little girl, bro. And she got killed and shit. Ah, everything that was hidden will come to light. All right. It was written in the book. All right. The man said it. It's happening. Your fucking devils will be exposed for your fucking crimes, for your debaucherous for your shit you've gotten away with for years, raping and molesting children. Fuck you. It's happening. It's going down. Uh, God bless 50 Cent for being a troll. Cheers! Uh, but not a troll. But more like a, a wise man. From jail. Sent a message to Diddy. A message that unfortunately was obtained by TMZ. So I had to cut up the message and hopefully I don't get banned for playing this because it belongs to TMZ. But here we go. I cut it up and I only put the best parts. But here's a message from a wise man from jail. A message to Diddy. Here we go. I tell you what, Puffy. Your life is in danger because you know the secrets. Who's involved in that little secret room you guys participating in? You know they're going to get you if they can. I turn myself in. Do not do your time going by Brother Love. Brother Love is not a good code name for prison. Do not go by Brother Love if you're coming into prison, you dumbass. You're going to get fucked by everyone in prison because they want some love from Brother Love. <laughs> <laughs> but Suge Knight keeps on and going and he says, motherfucker, your life's in danger because you're about to go into court and you're about to be questioned by the prosecutors. And if you name anybody who is in that room with you doing those things that you do, you're going to die because those are powerful people. I can tell you a few of them already. Dr. Dre's in there. Jimmy Iovine is in there. A bunch of record, a bunch of big named record executives, white Jewish motherfuckers from the industry are all in that fucking having gay sex orgies within these black women naked there, feeding them pink cocaine. <laughs> Butt plugs and all. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. It's 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 true. It's true. And if Puff Daddy lets anything slip out in court, we're gonna find out. Oh, he committed suicide in jail somehow before the court ended. Yeah, uh, fucking Jeffrey Epstein all over again, folks. 
So this motherfucker, look at him pacing up and down. He better keep his mouth shut and take his prison time. Just like Suge Knight said, I took my prison time. You don't fuck with these people. You idiot. Yeah. I wonder who fucked it all off for them. Well, my theory, my theory is and has been, is that the Yeze fucked it up for all of them. Because the Yeze is the true Yeze in the group. And he's come out to spit nothing but the truth and liberate the brown people. And he's come just like Moses in Egyptian days here to save the slaves. Ah, oh, yeah, Yeze. And he knew it all along. Here's an old interview from the Yeze. Poison me. And by the way, y'all already fuck with me so much. Y'all already black mirrored me. You already made everybody think I'm crazy. You already took my family away. You already separated all my friends. I don't got no celebrity friends. Because when I was on TV, on Instagram saying, I don't know where my child is. And the Kardashians kidnapped my daughter in public. And I didn't have the address of my child. None of these niggas that want to say something Travis now. Travis gave you the address, though? Travis gave me the address. Right. But as far as Meek Mills, no. Puff Daddy, whoever, none of these niggas. All you fake hard niggas, fuck you. Wait, Come, wait, no, no, wait. hold on, hold on. Okay. All you fake hard niggas, fuck you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I don't give a fuck who, because you can't shoot nobody anyway. And the reason why you got talks is because you did a deal, you fucking fed. You know what I'm saying? That's why you got to come at me, because part of the deal for you to be a do all that, rah, 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 and get out of jail is that you promise that you're going to go pull my co-car. Co so y'all niggas shut the fuck up about me. Now, let me say it calm. You niggas shut the fuck up about, you shut the fuck up about Michael. Right. That was in 2023. And he's straight up saying, fuck you, Diddy. Because the only reason you're not in jail for that shooting with J-Lo when you shot that motherfucker and you killed and shit is because part of the deal is you fucking, you're one of them, you son of a bitch. And they use you because you like the finger in the ass and you like to give fingers in the ass. And when you're nothing but a tool and a mule to them, you're expendable. And right now, you're seeing the result of what happens when you're expendable, folks. You make the deal with the devil, it eventually runs out or he has no more use for you. And Kanye knew it all along. Everybody talks shit about the Yeze. The Yeze is wise beyond any of you motherfuckers has ever been. Listen, we're talking about the, my Yeze. Listen, we're talking about him. Let's get straight into it. The Yeze news. Because... This week, he's being hit with a new lawsuit. On top of all his multiple anti-Semitic lawsuits and racisms and all these fucking, you know, he hates this and hates that and ass. Well, now because of his Donda Academy, they're saying, holy shit, the teachers are suing him. They're saying this motherfucker. He was saying that fucking if kids misbehaved to put him in cages for a day. A small cage, not like, not, not, not small where they're hunched, like just small to their height, but small enough so that they don't have a lot, they just don't only move to the sides and that's about it. Just, they have to stand up for the whole time and they learn their lesson and that way they don't misbehave because that's what it's like in jail. And not only that, but apparently he also wanted every boy to have their head shaved like him. No hair. They better look like me. No hair policy and shit. Now, this is just a lawsuit. This sounds to me like a bunch of lies. There's no way in hell my Yeze would have this kinds of fucking nonsense for the children. I mean, come on now. The children are the future and the Yeze understands that. This is, this is debaucherous. This is just slander, you guys. This is slander to ruin my Yeze's name all right fuck you if you fucking believe this ass this is this they had the best education and the best music the motherfuckers these kids and they were not there for a long time because right away the school got shut down because apparently it wasn't to code and all this ass and shit you know 
Uh, everybody's making up lies, apparently. All these lies, you know. But I'm telling you, all these kids are going to grow up to be like fucking like like the next big stars or movie stars. They're going to be famous and shit. They're going to be rich as fuck. Richer than the rest of us. Right? They're lucky they even spent a few weeks in the curriculum that the Yeezy prepared, for their, prepared them in life for. You dicks. So I think this is all a bunch of lies. But what is not lies is what actually did happen in the Yeze's life this week. Because Yeze continues to show you all up and shut you the fuck up. Because he was being a family man this week. And him and his wife, half his age, younger, Bianca Sensori, went out and she was actually covered. Sort of. It was a skin tight. Uh, bodysuit, you could still see the slit, like her pussy lips and her nipples and her ass crack. Not her asshole, but her ass crack. Um, but she looked like a superhero because the kids really like, you know, the Marvel Universe and the DC and the, what, what is it called? Invincible. They like all that shit. And so she wanted to look like a superhero for them. And so she looked like a superhero. And they went to the cheese Cheesecake Factory or whatever this is. I don't know, the Steakhouse. I don't know, some tavern. I don't know, some some place that serves alcohol. So Yeezy and the wife can, and can also drink. But they took the kids. But if you all notice, the kids with the nanny, they go in a different car than the Yeze and the wife. Uh, because, you know, the Yeze, when he has his wife dressed like this and he has these baggy pants, you know damn well Yeze is going commando. And he's gonna get his dick suck on the way back. Oh yeah! Cheers, Jesse! <laughs> this guy, I, I just finished this beer. This guy is my fucking idol, man. Like, I just, this is the life I want to live. You know? Half, half, half a hot wife that looked just like your ex, but half her age and even hotter. Natural, no plastic surgery, and a bunch of kids with the other one that still respect you and shit. This is a bad, badass. Look at all those kids; they're rich as fuck. Those kids are richer than me and you right now, motherfuckers. <laughs> ah, I'm gonna smoke this to the Yeze. You know he lives a life, the life that all of us are jealous of. No matter what you want to say about him, you wish. You motherfuckers wish you could spend a day in his life because I'm telling you, it would be awesome. I tell you, one of these days, one of these days, motherfuckers. Oh, yeah. Cheers. Cheers to the Yeezy. Cheers to the family, man. I love you in this channel. Uh, but that is it. That That is it all uh, for today, this week, for the weekly pop culture breakdown. I'm going to take a big hit to end that motherfucker. Cheers, Gomer. Pop over a new beer for you motherfuckers. Cheers. Happy Friday. Cheers, D-Post. Thank you for being here tonight. I love you. We'll see you next week, motherfucker. Uh, Super Saiyan Joku, the cunt. Um, the cunt's probably passed out, too. Oh, I don't know. No, no. It's, it's early for him. This guy, this guy's was late for him. The Netherlands was way different. Uh, we're going worldwide, motherfucker. We're gonna have Asian. We're gonna have Chinese, motherfuckers. The Philippines. We had the Philippines over there with fucking. Uh, God damn it! I already forgot this guy's name from the Philippines. Andrew Sanchez from the Philippines. Uh, we had Andrew Sanchez also. He's he he was made an official woke pack member. Uh, so all you motherfuckers worldwide, right here coming at you, fucking Gomer Kyle, Super Saiyan Joku, fucking uh, Indie Phantom. All you motherfuckers. Cheers. Happy Friday. Happy weekend, everybody. All right, but let's get started with the comic book nerd shit of the week. And this week, we're going to start off with uh, 
Maggie Gyllenhaal? Jake Gyllenhaal's sister? Is making a movie? <clears throat> Excuse me. And it's called The Bride. And they started filming it. I'm sorry about this. I'm, I'm cutting up some weed right now. And uh, they started a movie about this. And it's supposed to be a modern Frankenstein. Sort of. It's set in the 30s. Is what I read. And it's going to be starred Kristen Bale as Frankenstein. But the movie's called The Bride, so this is technically part two, The Bride of Frankenstein. Here is The Bride and Frankenstein for you. What in the motherfuck is Hollywood's obsession with putting tattoos on everything? <sighs> Frankenstein has dope on him. And look, I don't see any tattoos on his face, thank God. But he does have the word dope on his chest. And if this is 1930s, why does he have a tattoo that says dope on his chest? And why does his clothes have writing on it like if it's modern day? What kind of a movie is being made here is my question uh, I don't want to say that Christian Bale is not a good actor because he is amazing in the caliber up there but I just don't understand the vision is what I am uh, trying to say. I don't understand this girl who, Gomer Kyle, thank you very much for pointing that out. Made, uh, Maggie Gyllenhaal has come out naked in mostly every movie she's ever done or has sex scenes. I've seen her nipples as well. Uh, very natural, very natural uh, woman. But she does resemble her brother a lot and it takes away from me trying to get aroused. That's all I'm going to say. But, um... I don't understand her vision in this movie. Is all I'm saying. The dope. What? 1930s people said dope. In fact, the tattoo doesn't even look real. Like it's actually on the skin. It looks like it was photoshopped on there by somebody. Ah. What the fuck is going on here? I don't know. Maybe I'm being too judgmental. Maybe. It has, in all honesty, it's only a couple pictures. There's no trailer, nothing. It's just saying, oh, we're filming a movie and shit. And the Christian Bale's a Frankenstein. And this other girl, whoever the fuck she is, is fucking, uh, you know, the, the bride. Who's the movie is about and shit. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what the bride ends up being. I'm not cheering to it. I'm just saying, okay. Uh, but something that was revealed this week was a teaser for, because we talked about the Pooniverse and this stupid ass B-movie horror shit that they're doing. Universe. Avengers Assemble. Shit like that. But they showed the next movie from Winnie the Pooh. Play part two, the next movie continuing from the saga is Bambi the Reckoning. And they showed a trailer. 
And I gotta say, and it's just a teaser. It looks fucking badass. Uh, a fucking CGI crazy deer flips over a car and then screams. And then it's all fucked up like half zombie and shit. It looks nuts. I don't give a fuck about the Winnie the Pooh movies, the past two asses, the stupid costumes, this ass. I'm gonna watch this for sure. And this is only the teaser. I can't wait to see the trailer. This reminds me of Cocaine Bear. <laughs> Did you guys see Cocaine Bear? Cocaine Bear was so badass. I loved it. It was so 80s. Oh, yeah. It was gory. And crazy as fuck. Uh, totally unexpected. And, and rest rest in peace, Ray Liotta. We miss you out. We're the best. Uh, one of his last films. Uh, but this looks pretty fucking sick. And I, I am interested in seeing this. Uh, it looks good. As long as they keep it like this, this kind of special effects where everything's dark. And, uh, and, and shit. Maybe not take away the lights. You want to see everything in shadows and dark. It looks cool like that. Obviously, I thought they were going to use a... I'm kind of surprised. I thought it was going to be a puppet or some stupid shit. Because the other thing is that some dumbass is wearing a Winnie the Pooh mask and some lame ass of fucking makeup. But this looks cool, man. This at least looks some effort was... The, the thought and effort was put into this movie. We'll see what the trailer ends up, but the, the teaser has has me excited. I'm gonna lie, I'm gonna lie. So cheers to that be the reckoning. I'll cheers to this ass. Uh, but something that I don't I don't think the cunt's here anymore because I need mean, he's probably out eating breakfast or getting some weed. But something that I know he would have been excited about, Duncan Egg. Has now been cast. And Peter Claffley, who's like in some show about soccer, some ass. I don't know what these fucking, I don't know what they're called, some British shows and shit. And Dexter So and Cell, who's like, uh, I don't know what these little, little British boys and shit are being cast as Sir Duncan the Tall and Aegon the Third. Egg, Dunk, and Egg. And I think they look perfect. But I gotta tell you one thing. Oh my god. I feel so bad for this little boy. Because they're gonna shave his head. And that's gonna fuck up his hair. His hair will never look that good ever again. <laughs> It will never grow like that again. It'll grow weird. And uh, and, and when he's older, he'll regret it. Feel bad for him. Uh, but you know what? He does look like he has a big receding hairline. So he might as well, he might be going bald already. So maybe it's a good thing he gets used to shaving his head. Fuck it. <laughs> but he's really young. I didn't know who this kid was. And I went and looked for videos. And shit online of him. And he's really young. Uh, or at least looks and talks really young. He, I don't know. I felt like some of the videos I saw. I thought I was watching a two, three year old. A four year old. I was like, god damn it. Uh, but I think it's perfect. Because Dunkin' Egg. The, con the contrast in them will be really, really different. And... If this gets really popular, if they're smart, they can just continue it because this kid's obviously going to get older and he can become Aegon the Third, the king, the king that births the Mad King, you know, but he could be Aegon the Third and Sir Duncan can be his fucking Sir Jamie or the, the guy in charge. I forget what they were called. The guy, the right-hand guy in charge of the army. It's shit. 
Um, and and they could continue the story like that, man, and make a new saga. And you know, it could happen. I'm excited for this, and I'm glad that some fucking major development finally came out of this. And I know that this is finally gonna happen. They're gonna fucking film this. They're gonna shoot this. Thank God it actually is going to happen. So I am definitely going to cheers to a knight of the seven kingdoms, the hedge knight, Duncan Egg. Oh, yeah. It's probably going to be a short series. I mean, they could probably do this whole in one season. All of this in one season. But that's what I'm saying. If it becomes good, it could become further where now he's king little boy's king and that's his right hand man show show after that he gives birth to the mad king ah oh, the continuation and shit master amon goes to the wall to become a fucking blind mate may a, a, a uh what do they call it a maester and shit be so badass that's all i'm saying cheers I love this. This excites me. I love Game of Thrones. How's the dragon? I can't wait. My Khaleesi's. We miss you. We hope you get resurrected with a dragon. That fucking son of a bitch ever gets off his ass and fucking finishes writing the story and shit. Pisses me off, George R. R. Martin. You dumbass. You're sitting on a gold mine. Anyways. Another shit that came out of this week is that Adam Wingard on the interview said, oh, I already know if, because I'm, you know, he said the other, the other two weeks ago that he wanted to fucking do, uh, he wanted to fucking do, uh, uh, uh finish the script for the Thundercats and shit, uh, after this movie. Uh, but he said that, you know what? I would really love to come back to this franchise for sure. And if they give me another opportunity, I would love to bring Destroyer to the big screen. Because we need to do him justice in the MonsterVerse. Destroyer. I love Destroyer. I love a lot of the, the newly created monsters in that era. I don't, I don't. I'm not of I'm an, I'm a Godzilla fan, but I'm not that much of a nerd where I know all the directors, the the show ho and shit like that. I don't I don't know all the exact era names, but that specific era, I love the monsters that were created in the era. Because Destroyer was brand new and looked badass. Biolante, I love Biolante. He's one of my favorite ones too. New ones. Space Godzilla was so fucking badass. I like these new kaijus that were just made up, you know. So I like the MonsterVerse has been making up their own kaijus and shit just like that, you know. Uh, but to bring back Destroya would be sick. And he has to be humongous, even bigger than Shimu. You know what I'm saying? Good Godzilla needs to be literally up to his that the middle of his chest. Destroya needs to be humongous. Um, I don't know. That'd be crazy if he brings him. But I think the possibility of Wingard bringing Destroya to the big screen in the MonsterVerse is pretty much a done deal and a very large, huge possibility. And the reason is because if you haven't noticed, Godzilla X-Kong is a hit. Everybody took their families over the Easter weekend. Over Jesus Christ's resurrection. They took them to go see Godzilla and a fucking monkey beat the shit out of another monkey and another bigger Godzilla who shoots ice and shit. And this movie made $214 million worldwide. Unprecedented for any movie post-COVID era. $214 million worldwide on a $135 million budget. That is literally half 
of what a Marvel production costs to make. And that's including a Disney Plus show because even the Disney Plus shows are costing $200 million to make ass. This costs half of that and has already crossed twice as much. Fuck you, Kevin Feige. Fuck you, Disney. This fucking nerd who's probably on crack. Look at those eyes and shit. His pupils are so dilated. You know he's fucking taking acid and shit. That's where you saw all those pinks and blues in that movie and it looked badass. This guy's a genius. You're goddamn right. They're going to give him another movie to make. This is only the, what, the first week? And it's made twice as much as it cost? It's still got at least three more weeks, at least three more weeks of being in theaters. This is a hit, you idiots. This is a profit if there ever was one. Studios need to fucking take notes here. People don't care about your Marvel continuity and your bullshit. They don't. The only thing people care about is fucking Good looking shit to see over an Easter weekend. All right. Cheers to Wingard and the Godzilla Monsterverse. I loved it. But moving on to ass, the main ass. The DC main ass. Joker. Foliadox. Released a brand new poster. As a teaser. For their teaser coming this Tuesday. April the 9th. A teaser. A poster. That I have to say to you. Is probably the most good looking poster I have seen in the past decade. I am getting this and framing this. Whether this movie bombs or not, the poster is a goddamn work of art. Wow. It looks badass. Colors. Gaga. Joaquin. It's like seeing the crucifixion. It's amazing. And plus it matches with the colors of the scheme of our channel and shit. So it's perfect. It's perfect for this. It belongs back there. Right there by the light. <laughs> That's where I want to put it. Oh, it's beautiful. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, whoever did this poster, fucking this guy needs a raise. He needs his dick sucked by whatever, you know, he's into Hollywood. You know how it is. But yes, he, that man needs to be praised for this work of art. It's a beautiful Beautiful fucking poster. I'll just put it like that. And it does have me very hyped for the trailer. It's already come out that this has 15 musical old school songs. Duets, sometimes solos. But we're getting him, Joaquin. And Gaga doing old school songs. 15 throughout the whole movie. I can tell you that a movie that I hate it very much. And I watched in theaters and gave it my money. Because I, I, I used to like supporting shit like this. But the Elton John movie. With that Kingsman guy. I forget what his name is. Edgerton. I paid for it. And that hat. 
it had maybe four to maybe five suddenly breaking into musical trippy fucking like all of a sudden it wasn't a movie and you were watching a Broadway play it, it would turn into that it happened at least five times in the movie and it pissed me off because it took me out of it not only that moment the movie was super gay <laughs> <laughs> and I saw, look, I saw, I don't know if you've ever seen Hedwig and the Angry Inch or some shit like that. I love that fucking movie. Hedwig. <laughs> Hedwig and the Angry Inch. I think it's what it's called. That movie is, is so crazy, but I love that fucking movie. But I saw the Elton John movie and I said, this movie is fucking gay. <laughs> If you ever see Hedwig and the Angry Inch, you're going to be like this movie. <laughs> I love that movie. It's all I'm going to say. That movie's awesome. It's fucking, it made me laugh so much. And it just fucking, I was like, this movie's awesome. <laughs> like whoever made this, the actor, that guy is amazing. I give it up to that guy so bad. That guy's fucking, that guy deserves an Oscar for that fucking movie, bro. Yeah, it's not a movie for everyone, <laughs> but if you go through it all, you're going to be like, this is actually a crazy good movie. <laughs> ah. But anyways, next week, we're going to talk about this trailer uh, because uh, we're going to see this on Tuesday and we will find out by the trailer whether this is going to be good or not, because <laughs> this could be anything. Who knows? But since we're moving on to DC, let's talk about the main ass. And that's none other than Mr. James Gunn himself. Because the rumors are now coming out this week. Earlier this week, it was being reported that the villain was going to be none other than Bizarro Superman. A, a defective clone by Lex Luthor. And it was going to be Bizarro Superman. Because the stunt double for Henry, for David Cornswit was going to have two roles and was going to be fucking playing both characters. Well, a few days went by and this was clarified a little bit more. And they Nan said that it wasn't Bizarro. It is a clone of Superman. But it's not Bizarro. It's none other than Ultraman. A clone of Superman that Lex Luthor makes from, from fucking Clark's DNA or whatever. So basically, the plot of Superman 3? I think it was Superman 3 when Lex Luthor makes Nuclear Man. It's shit. So it's, uh, it's the same shit. Lex Luthor makes an evil Superman. And that's the bad guy of this movie. Pretty much the generic superhero introduction movie. Iron Man fought the Iron Mong girl. Thor fought his god brother, Loki. Fucking... <sighs> Uh, excuse me. You know, it's always the same shit. Aquaman fights his brother. It's always like he fights the counterpart. The hero fights the counterpart of himself. So he fights the evil Superman clone. The Lex Luthor made. And shit. Really lame. But fucking James Gunn. Since he has nothing better to do than to be online on Twitter waiting for all these rumors and asinine fucking posts and tweets and threads to be posted that he has to right away put his two cents in it and he has come out and he about all these rumors and allegations and he said hey the primary protagonist of superman shockingly is going to be superman he's the hero and the main villain of superman shockingly is gonna be Lex Luthor. 
I don't know where all this bullshit's coming from. All this, this, this and that. There's so many stories and every day it's difficult for me to deal with, with all this, the, the strike come something down and I'm, I'm giving all this attention. And so I say again for the one millionth time. Don't believe anything unless you hear it. And why would you want to know anything before the movie even comes out anyways? Unless you hear it from me. Ah, <sighs> You idiot. Any nerd can tell by this post that you fucked up James Gunn. Because you didn't deny that it was false. All you said is that the good guy is Superman and the bad guy is Lex Luthor. But because Lex Luthor cannot fight Superman, he's going to make a clone of an evil Superman. Which you didn't at all deny. You idiot. <laughs> it's true. This is going to end up being true because... He, he's trying to beat up on the book. Oh, let me disguisingly try to, like, whatever, save face. You idiot. If you never were on Twitter, no one would even believe none of these rumors. You dumbass. Now we know it's true for sure. 100%. <laughs> the bad guy of this movie is Lex Luthor. But Lex Luthor will make a Superman clone to fight Superman. Fuck you, James Gunn. This is gonna be a shitty fucking movie. Cheers. Alright. I'm done with the DC ass. And James Gunn's idiocracies because he's a dumbass and I can't wait till this DC fucking universe it, it, it just implodes on itself on the very first movie he finally fucking premieres the Superman movie is going to be a fucking mess I just can't wait we'll see anyways on the Marvel side of things we got our first exciting brand new look at the new character or brand, brand new reimagining character on the Marvel universe None other than Ghost in the Thunderbolts. And I'm showing you on the left the picture that's on the internet. And I'm showing you on the right the picture from the movie in the last time we saw her in Ant-Man Part 2. Which was a long time ago. In that movie, she was all white and shit. In this picture that we're seeing, and I didn't do this. This is the only picture online. It's only from her above her ankles all the way down to below her shoulders. So we don't even see the her face. We just see the hood behind her back. And it looks like her costume, instead of being a one-piece suit, it has a skirt. But the difference is that it's all black and gray instead of being white. Okay, or gray. It's just black, dark. She's a bad guy, I guess. Suicide Squad, Marvel Suicide Squad, Thunderbolt. I do not understand why all these leakers and spoilers and motherfucking pussies that take these pictures. You obviously work there. Duh. Well, how else could you get that close? You obviously worked there. You obviously are going to get fired for doing this. 
So why not actually take the time and take the picture the right way so we see it all in its whole? And with a better fucking... What? What, what was this taken with? A fucking flip phone from, nine, from 2000? Look at the quality of this shitty, grainy picture of a cell phone that you took this on. There are cricket wireless phones that have better quality on their fucking pixel phones than this ass you took it on, you idiot. What did you take this with your fucking foot? You idiot. This is ass. Like, this is the worst leak spoiler ever in the history of spoilers we have ever shown here. But there's no news, and this is the spoiler that was shown this week, and it's been pissing me off because everything everybody thinks is so cool. Fuck you. Whoever took this picture is a fucking idiot. You're going to get fired. At least try to take the picture the right way. So if you get fired, it was worth it. Imagine if you got fired because you took a piece of shit grainy ass, not even the, the head of the actor. Fuck you. This pisses me off. We're done with this. Alright, I got my joint now. Let's get this going. This week, moving on to some Marvel ass. But Kevin Feige teased us on April the 4th, 2024. Excuse me. With a tease of Joseph Quinn as Johnny Storm in the Fantastic Four on fire. Happy 4 4 24 day. Fantastic Four coming at you next year. Kevin Feige. Joseph Quinn. Oh, yeah. I mean, you could tell he's wearing a suit and it's like that velvet ridgy shit. From like the past, you know, that fucking whatever, uh, you know, texture. So it's old. But yeah, he's on fire. He looks like any other fucking human torch we've ever seen in all of our fucking lives. So it's not like something like, oh, wow, dude, badass. This is the same shit we've ever seen in our entire fucking lives and shit. <laughs> Fuck you. Nothing new. Nothing badass. At least, that's what we thought. If you look closely, my friends, zoomed in to the city in the background. Looks nothing at all like the 1960s. In fact, it looks nothing at all like modern days either in fact it looks like like a, a combination I'll say it like this of futuristic but with the way people in the past used to think the future was going to look like. And I already fucking think I know what Kevin Feige is doing here. We're basically going to get Fantastic Four as the Jetsons in the MCU. Yeah. Let me explain to you what I'm talking about. This is going to be, and it's it's exactly what the spoilers had said, but now it makes more sense. The Fantastic Four are from an alternate reality, an alternate universe, where there are no MCU heroes. There are no X-Men. The only superheroes or people with powers are them four. 
the kids they're gonna have, which apparently they're gonna have Franklin, Richards, and Valeria in it. And there are no X-Men in this. They are the only super powered people in this universe. And they are the only people that exist with powers. Galactus will be the bad guy. This is a Fantastic Four centered movie. Only with them in it. Galactus will be the bad guy. And because it's an alternate universe, not the MCU, and not the comic books, they have casted Julia Garner as Shalabao, as the Silver Surfer. <laughs> but, because it's in an alternate universe, alternate reality where things are different. In this universe and reality. Because what happens in the comic books is that Nor Norman Rad, which is a silver surfer. I might be saying his name right. I'm wrong. I'm not less sick. I say things backwards. But whatever his name is. He... Sacrificed himself and told Galactus, I'll become your herald, herald as long as you let her planet live because she, I don't want her to die. And so he sacrifices himself and he becomes a slave in order to to so her world doesn't dis get destroyed and she gets to live. In this reality, it was the other way around. And so she becomes Galactus's herald instead of him. It's a different universe, different reality, and the MCU lives on. The story's just switched. That's what they're gonna do. I mean, this little girl's a good actress, and she's probably gonna do good in it, but the whole fact that she went... The whole being another universe, another reality was just an excuse for them to be able to switch this role. And the fucked up part about it is that none other than fucking Lakeith Steinfeld has recently come out. And he has said, hey, I actually tried out. And had talks with Marvel. I had auditions. And I had talks with Marvel. To be the Silver Surfer. Nolan Red. I thought I was getting the part. But I guess they, they, they fucking did something else. That's some bullshit. Imagine. This guy's a good actor. And he's actually pretty... He's kind of built to be the Silver Surfer when you think about it. And he's a good enough actor that I wouldn't have mind. I don't give a fuck if he's black. They're going to spray paint his ass silver. That's all I care about. The motherfucker's silver and naked on a surfboard. That's all I want to see. Uh, but you know what? Seeing this little girl <laughs> naked on a sur silver surfer board. <laughs> Maybe this is what the fucking Hollywood executives wanted all along, folks. Now it's starting to make sense. They want a fucking little girl nude spray painted in silver for a fucking movie. You sick sons of bitches. Somehow you did it again. Fuck you. I'm not cheering to that. I'm just an alcoholic. Um, I don't know. This is crazy. That this little girl... And the whole Silver Surfer role has been literally, literally gender swapped for this movie. Um, this movie better be good because these kinds of changes could make or break your fucking movie. That's all I'm going to say. I can't judge it because I'm in deep down inside. I'm actually excited for a Fantastic Four movie, MCU Fantastic Four movie, 
and I want to see what Kevin Feige brings up to the plate. But uh, it's just sounding like ass right now. Speaking of ass, and we're moving on to good ass. But Deadpool 3 rumors are coming out. And the newest rumor is that Jessica Alba, which we said was coming back, just like, you know, fucking George, J J J James Marsterson and Fomeka James and Halle Berry, Taylor Swift and all these people were going to come out in the movie and shit and Tadjit Edgerton and Harry Potter and all these fucking guys and shit. They were all excited about it. But we already heard that some of the Fantastic Four might coming out. Maybe Michael Cheekless. I don't know. And for sure, maybe. I don't know. Uh, Chris Evans uh, as the Human Torch. Uh, and what's his name? Uh, uh, Gufford. Fantastic Four. Mr. Fantastic. And then, and of course, Jessica Alba. Well, now it's being said that they, for sure, Jessica Alba is coming out. And she is going to be Mrs. Fantastic, the wife of Reed Richards, but not Reed Richards, Eon Gufford, but rather John Krasinski. This is not saying that John Krasinski is going to be in the movie. This is saying that when she comes out as the Invisible Woman, she is going to say she is the wife of that Mr. Fantastic, the one we saw from the Multiverse of Madness. That's going to be the explanation, and that's going to be who she's going to play or be. Kevin Feige, you could have gold in this. I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see. But Jessica Alba is fine as fuck. And I want to see her in something tight and smooth like this. Cheers. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's finish this off to the end of this. X-Men 97. X-Men 97, episode 4. Which was, for some strange reason, two episodes in one. 15, 15 minutes episodes to one episode and 15 minutes to the second episode. And they start us off with a fuck you. They start us off with Gambit again. In the morning, with his fucking, uh, 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 fucking, uh, what's his name? Hook from AW fucking hair and his ponytail on the side with his half cut up. Let me, I'll do it right now with this type of shirt. This is, this is fucking Gambit. Fuck you. Some bullshit. They do it again. A, a, a fuck you to the complainers. And why is Magneto <laughs> wearing a muscle shirt and gloves in breakfast? A rogue fool leotard. In if you're in breakfast, why is Gambit the only one being a fucking ah, slob with a fucking geeky? Fuck you. None of this scene makes sense. None of the scene makes sense. And it pisses me the fuck off when I saw it at the beginning. Alright. The next 15 minutes is something called Mutendo. And what I thought was going to be awesome because Mojo Jojo. And also, for no fucking explanation or reason at all. They don't explain how Mojo got a game console in Jubilee's room. And how any of this is possible. But Jubilee 
and this immigrant kid, I forget what his name is, Sunspot, they get fucking, I don't know, technorized or just taken into the game. It no ex none doesn't make sense. It's <laughs> it that's what bothers me, you know. I thought it was gonna be more like they actually got abducted by a spaceship and then got thrown into some machine. No, this doesn't make no sense. Ah, uh, and then Mojo is skinny as fuck. And I swear to God, right away I got pissed. I don't know who the voice actor is, but I know for a fact that it's not the original voice actors. It's not. It's a completely different person. And I have a feeling this person is female b born, but may, may not identify as a female at the moment. But, at the very least, I know she was born without a penis. Whether she believes she has one or does not have one, or maybe surgically might have one, or I don't know what the fuck it's called. That is up for grabs. But at the very least, I'm pretty... I, I mean, look, this person sounds like a woman. Doing this voice. And the voice, when I was a kid, I used to think it was that guy. That comedian. Uh, it's not Bobcat, the, other, the, the fucking guy who wore the trench coat and the little fucking thing. I forget what his name was. Uh, I thought that I thought that guy sounded like Mojo or Mojo sounded like him. But it was a man who used to play this character. But then they made him skinny and he said, oh, I got a facelift and a tuck and this and that for Hollywood. Stupid fucking explanations and shit. And I was just like, oh, my God. And then I was like, okay, it's going to get to where he's going to put them in the game, right? Where it's going to get cool because that's what I saw in the previews and the spoilers. I thought it was going to be all 16-bit. And then it got to that part and all the 16-bit was like literally what I'm showing you. It was like a few fucking seconds of just showing you some shit. And then it would go back to like the regular ass. And I was just like, no, mamas. Uh, Sam Kinison. Yeah, Gomer, I knew you were going to know. I knew you were going to know. Sam Kinison, I always thought, like, Mojo. I thought as a kid that Sam Kinison did Mojo. I thought he was doing Mojo because I thought he sounded like him. You know, he sounded like this and shit. <laughs> so I thought that was who he was and shit. Uh, but no, it's some other guy. But I don't know who this is played by, but it's not the same. It's not the same, and it's a. it sounds like a woman doing this. And it pisses me off. But the 16-bit part of the episode, which should have been the entire episode. Mind you, this is only 15 minutes. They crutched, they, they halved this episode, half and half. So this was 15 minutes, which sucks. This whole episode should have been all 16 bits put in put into the game and you're 16 bits just like this. And then the other X-Men have to go into the game and save you. But no, this was all ass. And then this crazy Jubilee meets fucking Tron. She meets a version of herself. That's a computer. A simulation that Mojo made, but when Rogue. And now she's old. And she's in the game and decides to help her out. And she's not even real, but she's an old simulation of her. Fucking stupid. And then it teaches her, like, look at all the shit you can do with your powers, even though we're inside of a computer. And this isn't real. And I'm not real. But let me show you all these Dragon Ball. And I'm not lying. Dragon Ball moves you can do with your powers that you never knew before. So when you go into the real world, you can use them later in the episodes. She's using fucking the, the disc that Krillin makes. And then she also does a spirit bomb. Look at this. I'm not even lying when I say this shit. This is some Dragon Ball shit, right? They fuse. And they make like a fucking spirit bomb together and they and then mind you all of a sudden for no explanation at all Mojo goes from being skinny to being back to fat 
No explanation. He was anorexic and skinny, and then all of a sudden he's fat, and they throw a spirit bomb to destroy him. And this is all in the digital world. This isn't even the real world, which makes no fucking sense. This is in the digital world. And then the, the video game melts and Jubilee and this little Mexican immigrant kid are all like, Oh, I guess that's it. And then Jubilee gets horny and makes out with him. And that's how that 15 minute episode ends. No, wait, hold on. Why am I saying 15? 30 minutes because it's a half and half. I think this is an hour long. I think they're in a... Whatever long it is, I think it's an hour long. You know what? I'm going to check really quick because I don't want to seem like an asshole, like I'm criticizing the shit if I don't know. No. You know what? These are only 30 minutes long. I just saw it. So this is only 15 minutes of ass. 15 minutes. They crunched this whole story into 15 minutes. And the most exciting part that I wanted to see was the when they're in the video game in 16 bits animations and literally that shit must have been like 10 minutes long and it wasn't even that much i was so pissed off they fucking teased the whole video game shit and they didn't even do it fucking dicks oh all right finish this off because the other 15 minutes of the episode. These are not even an hour long. These are 30 minute episodes. The other 15 minutes of it. Was Storm. And the Forge. Love story crunched into like 15 minutes. Chinga madre. They fall in. They basically. Forge and Storm fall in love. In 15 minutes. And you learn more about Forge's origin. And who he is. And his powers. And Storm and then falling in love. And he has this machine trying to get her powers back. But she finds out that he sold his ideas to the government. And the government made the gun that took her powers away. Just like in the comic books. And she gets mad. And she fucking leaves him. And runs away. And when she runs away. Uh, and I'm fucking I'm going too fast and shit. But it doesn't matter. She gets mad at him and shit. Uh, and when she runs away from his ass, she slaps him. That's not some bad. That was badass. She, he tells her, I love you. And she slaps the shit out of him. And she leaves. And when she leaves, all of a sudden. And I thought the Shadow King was going to come out and take over Storm again. And no. It's like some owl demon. An owl demon. And it calls itself... The fucking, uh, god damn it, I forget what it's called. The rival or the adversary. The adversary is what it calls itself. And I was just like, what the fuck is the adversary? Because I don't even know what that is. And I didn't know. I had to go look it on the internet. It's some Native American demon that Forge fights. And I guess they're combining it with... It. I, just, I don't know. This is just ass. Because this also stays to be continued when the adversary, the owl god, takes storm. It fucking, it fucking stays to be continued. And you know what the worst part is? Is that we know at least two more episodes will happen before we see the continuation to this one because when we read the episode list the part two to this story doesn't come out until way later and shit this is uh, they should have never never have touched x-men 97 god damn it this sucks so much ass so much ass. Like, if you were going to do a storyline where uh, Forge and Storm and Fun Love, 15 minutes to crunch half of it. Because, you, you know, you're doing, you're, you're, you're giving it somehow to justice because it's still going to have a part two, a 15 minute part two in another episode. But fuck you. 
this could have been two three episodes the whole fucking thing dragged out throughout throughout episode like it's just uh you know what i understand i haven't seen maybe there's another reason why that asshole de mayo got fired but you know what maybe this is why he got fired because this is ass to me to someone who actually is smart and watch the original series and fucking appreciate it for the fucking the the the, the world they built where I don't know what the fuck this is. God damn it. Episode five, who knows what the fuck that's gonna be. Uh I should I should fucking start bringing out the episode list so we start thinking about the next episode. What I'm gonna say is that so far, this was the episode I was most excited about because I thought, like I said, it was all gonna be fucking Jubilee and fucking 2D uh, 6 bit uh, uh, platforming 16 bit episode. And no, no. I thought it was gonna be Code Junkies. Y'all ever see Code Junkies on, on, the, on the fucking, what was it, G4? That shit was badass. I love Code Junkies. Code Junkies, cheers! I miss you! <laughs> But this was ass. And it's gonna take continue to be ass. And that's all I'm gonna say. Uh but anyways, I think I am seriously done ranting for tonight. And there was no more ass to talk about. So I'm gonna leave you with a little bit of life advice for you all to take home for the evening before I cheers for the last time. And that life advice is this is don't judge somebody not at least not before you put yourselves in put yourself in their shoes try to understand or ask yourself why it is this person is acting this way why is this person pissing me off why does this guy look like an idiot why is this guy such a badass it doesn't matter don't judge someone before you say, well, what if that was me? What's going on? And try to understand that person first. And then maybe you'll see things just a little bit different. Or at least you'll be able to forgive that person and say, yeah, you know what? I understand. I forgive him. Cheers. We'll see you next week. What the fuck, man? Fucking running like lady, eh?